Yo, what's happening, people? Welcome back to the Graph Kings podcast. We are back again at Kent's hottest nightclub, Moomoo's, here in Maidstone. And today we are joined by the man himself, Mike Delaney. How you doing, man? You good? You good? good, mate. Very good, good, man. So it's actually funny, actually, how I know Mike. Um, I was on TV with his brother a very long time ago. And I have never, ever met you until today. Uh, we've been back and forth on social media, similar to mine and Merck's relationship. We've always spoken on social media and have done for years and years and years. Always said we'd meet up, always said we'd go to the gym. We never really had a strong enough why because we live in different parts of the country. Mm. I live down here in the South, you live in Manchester. And uh, today, uh, well now, we've got an actual solid reason. We took advantage of the day as well, went to the gym before the before the pod. Oh, and now yeah, you're, yeah, you're here on the pod, man. It's good to have you on. Good to be here. Yeah, welcome good, back. Good, man. Um, the reason why I gravitated towards having you on the pod is the discussions we've had over the years um, of all, you've always been very articulate on certain subjects and uh, very knowledgeable on certain things that we here want to talk about on the pod. And uh, this pod is mainly focused towards like making men, men again, really. We're focused on all the issues that uh, in, in the Western world that are affecting men. And one of the questions I really want to dive into is do you believe in toxic masculinity do i believe in it is Um, it a thing well i think it's a it's a question of semantics in the first instance because if you believe in toxic masculinity you're saying that there's an element of masculinity that can go too far there's two ways you can characterize it you could say we're calling it toxic masculinity because it's an element, it's like an extreme perverted version of masculinity that's gone too far. Yeah. Or you could say, no, hang on, masculinity, we define it as this. And if you do that, like masculinity is not toxic. No. The absence of masculinity is toxic. So if you define masculinity as being, you know, loving, protecting, you know, striving to overcome obstacles, all these things that we associate with masculinity, typically speaking, um, then anything that sets outside of that and goes too far and, and is harmful, in, in some way, you could say, well, I don't think that is masculinity. Yeah, okay, that's fair enough. In my opinion, I would go on that side rather than using this word toxic masculinity because I feel like it's just been done to death at this point. Yeah. People just roll their eyes. Like if, if someone mentions that phrase around me, I'm just like, oh. Like, yeah. And the thing is you don't have like the opposite as well. You don't have like toxic femininity. Yeah. And I'm not saying that there should be. Yeah, of course. There should be one because like it's, you, you just then doing this tit for tat thing like oh we've got one so you have to have one yeah, do you know what i mean it's, but, but like men and women are different so i think we have we sh- probably should be held to different standards of course and that's just where it. do you think it actually stems from though because obviously it's, it's come about it's, it's very it's a it's a word that's thrown about a lot nowadays right yeah i think it's overdone with whether people agree or not it's there where do you think it actually stems from so i think it's a i think the term is a symptom it's a term that attempts to grapple with the reality that honestly, you know, in the last few decades, we're living in a crazy fucking time because for literally all of human history and like, you know, to, to quote, I think, uh, thanks mate, to quote, um, I think maybe Richard Dawkins, he was talking about how old the world is, right? He said, if you held your arm out like this, like the tiniest shave, like the tiniest tip of your um, fingernail is like where we are. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And so it's, it's a symptom of this view of history really where, you know, women have got more and more and more rights and now we're like 50, 50 equal. Do you know what I mean? Like Mm. socially, politically, economically, we're equals, aren't we? Yeah. And I think, um, it's this view of history that sees because we haven't been equal for most of history, uh, that sees it as almost like a just an entire history of oppression, if that makes sense. And so it's, it's kind of like masculinity in, in their view, I would say is, is, is the reason that you've had this mismatch for most of human history Mm. when, you know, and sure, like, you know, men, I think the way that I thought about it the other day was was thinking about this question. I thought, um, men have had more of the power and stuff like that institutionally but they've also had more they've had more autonomy and that autonomy includes the freedom to make mistakes and go get killed and 
you know, historically women were also the the most protected part of our yeah. society. Do you know what I mean? So, so like in a way, you could say, well, you know, this this society which treats women as like precious and should be protected and stay in the home. That's like an that is an element of the protective nature of masculinity to provide and protect for hearth and home because men will charge hills and kill each other to protect hearth and yeah, home. Do you know true. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so you have to consider that as well. So when you look at history, you have to think of it as more of a division of labor you know like women in the home bringing the kids up because kids need a loving mother yeah like of course the most important yeah, of first part of a child's life is like being close to the mother yeah I and then know. that needs to be protected and assured and guaranteed by the masculine um and and i, I think um another problem when we grapple with this as well is the terms masculinity and femininity yeah because personally i believe their their words they mean things they have they have meanings words yeah. are important yeah and you can't you can't like redefine masculinity you can't redefine femininity in my opinion um any any easier than you can redefine any other word i think they mean things it's like when um you want a bit of a tangent here but it's like when people say like oh say to say to women or oh, don't go to the gym you'll get you you'll get like a masculine yeah you yeah physique. and it's like Girls think that as well sometimes. Like yeah, girls yeah. go, oh, I don't want to start. I don't want to start lifting weights. I don't want to get big. You're not going to suddenly not just get anyway. big arms. Yeah, yeah, exactly. like, it yeah, just doesn't yeah. happen like that. Yeah. Trust me, I've been trying. I'm struggling to yeah, get like, big. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, absolutely, that that fear is over is overblown. Right? Yeah, of course. Proper. But I would argue, it, like building muscles, getting big muscles is a masculine trait. But guess what? Females can animate masculine traits. Yeah, yeah. Males, very well. Males well. can animate. Feminine traits, like you get so like it's a it's a case of semantics, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Like I would say, yeah, getting big muscles, getting fucking hench. That yes, that's we're a, saying we're too that's groomed, a, mate. That's a masculine, uh, that's a masculine trait. Sure, but it's okay for females to have masculine traits because of course the, it is, the yeah. fucking right. What's the? I'm gonna ask you this question. <clears throat> um, what's the name of the people that were famed for being like amazing soldiers in the ancient world? Tough as fuck. Spartans. Yeah, there you Spartans, go. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so, the, so the, but... the the pinnacle, <laughs> the pinnacle of masculinity, man, you might yeah. say, they fucking oiled their bodies up, shaved them, and like combed their hair and shit. That's a feminine trait, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Preening yourself, I would say that's a feminine trait. Yeah. But, and, and these but absolute ma- warriors, yeah, but, but males did it. So, yeah. so although they exhibited that feminine trait, overall, you would say it's a hyper masculine culture. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a, so it's a case of semantics and definitions, and I think when you bend them the debate becomes even more complicated yeah of course it does but broadly speaking i think <clears throat> we've got this term because it's almost like a mm-hmm. it's almost like a a symptom of like this sort of turbo type of feminism where it's like um okay we don't want to be equal we, we now want to get even and get one over on you sort of thing yeah it's almost going and so any behavior too far the other yeah, way. any behavior that seems to be like an imposition they want to make it like a male thing more yeah. than a more than a masculine thing because if masculinity doesn't just belong to males, which it doesn't, it's a it's a trait. Um, then females can be guilty of to- toxic masculinity as well. If you say aggression is toxic masculinity, what about the male victims of domestic abuse at the hands Good of women? Point. Is that are they victims of to- toxic masculinity? I don't think a lot of people would say they were. But that's why I don't like the term. Yeah, yeah I agree. Like some good points, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah I agree. I've never even looked at it in that kind of perspective before, but... What was the original question? Does it exist? Or yeah. Do you think it exists? Is it, if, what, yeah. what, what would you say... If, if you don't believe it exists, or you don't believe the, the phrase toxic masculinity ex, uh, exists, what's the driving force behind it? Why is it such a big phrase? Why has it been pushed so much nowadays? The reason we're asking this is, as well is because, as, as we spoke off camera as well, like, the youngsters today are seeing and hearing all of this. I and, worry. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I and, uh, that, I've yeah. got, I've got, I've actually got six nieces. I've actually got one nephew now. Mm. Um, and so for him growing up, I mean, he's not even one yet. For him growing up, he won't grow up. He'll grow up very masculine because of one of my with my brother is. But like, I'm afraid that when he starts going to school, I mean, and he's he's got two older sisters. That um, but as he starts growing up and going to school and things like this, the things that they're now starting to teach on youngsters. And I was only talking about this with my brother the other day. And it's like when Alfie goes to when Alfie starts going to school. And they start teaching him about different genders and things like this. It's like, 
it takes the innocence away of them being a kid. Like I was saying to my brother, like kids are not born racist. They're no. not born sexist. And they just want to love and hug and, and yeah, be yeah, friends yeah. with everyone, mm, right? Sure. That is in, inbred into them from their surroundings, their people, their parents, shit parenting, group, schools, peers, whatever the case may be. That's where they start to build these ideological ideas of what's good and bad and what they like and don't like. Yeah. And so yeah. if schools now start to push these genders on kids around don't worry, you know, you decide what you want to be when you grow up. If you want to identify as a fucking chair or identify as, like you can, like you think what's going through a kid's head anyway. Like when he wakes up, a kid wants to be a superhero, wants to be Batman, Superman and, yeah. and have that wild imagination. Yeah. Where is that going to spiral off onto if they start, start being true. told about yeah. all these different genders? Yeah. And yeah. like, that, that is a narrative that you begin to be able to completely not control. And then if I fear like, where is it going to get to the point of when you need to have an army, when you need to have a police force, when you need to have people protecting yeah. the streets, like, and then the, what? And the, the countries army, go and to the army shit. Is, and the army's obsessed with having like 50% women, 50% men. Yeah, well, for and example, like, right, like the RAF gave. not too long ago, they have actually now be, got like the, the, I can't remember what it was now, but right at the top of the Air Force, they have got, had emails leaked whereby they were willingly giving women and different minorities jobs over people that scored far higher than them just yeah. to tick a box yeah, like, yeah they they had a goal do that. they had a goal they said by such a year we want to be like 30 percent female or 30 30 yeah. percent black and ethnic minority backgrounds right yeah obviously that's just fucking outrageous like and to be fair i have heard the upper echelons of the army speaking out against stuff like this as well mm. saying like you know the battlefields like no it's literally no place for uh, for for a non meritocracy, basically, yeah. you can't have that. Like, no, I agree. You can't have that. Like, if, I think even when it comes to like police women and stuff like that, I think tomorrow we was only saying this the other day. Like, mm. one of our best mates, his sister's a copper, right? Yeah. So I think it's an amazing job, and you're you're hella brave for going to do that job, especially. Sure. I mean, she works in the Met as well, right? Yeah, London's a very dangerous place now, of course. Um, but I think to myself, if for example, a female policeman, I mean, don't go wrong, there's some really police tough women. women out there, right? If a policewoman really like wanted to arrest something like police person a, a police person yeah <laughs> some guys I think it's some guys I know and I think if a couple of police women wanted to arrest him and he really didn't want to be arrested you wouldn't be able to arrest him yeah I mean Just, like, I, I, saw I think of the same thing than the forces as well and I think yeah well, welcome with open arms but yeah. if I get shot in the leg and I can't suddenly walk you're not going to be able to carry me yeah one of you will be able to carry me yeah, yeah. well I've, made, I've been I, I was in the armed reserve for 11 years and I've been there where I've been we've been doing this insertion where you're basically like hurrying up to get to this like to get to like the front line basically sure and I had a medic next to me that couldn't carry the backpack that had all their med, med stuff in it now to be fair they they do they've only recently I believe opened the infantry like front line roles to women mm. they never and to this day I don't think any have passed. Maybe one's passed the commando course of the Royal Marines. Um, but to this day, I don't think, I I'm, could be wrong on this, but hardly any, mm. I want to say none, have passed the combat infantryman's course at Castric. Um, and that's because you need to be very physically So robust, physically demanding. Very that's it, yeah. fit. You've got to carry like 20 or 30 kilos. Your suitcase when you go on all I mean, I know yours probably weighs about 50k. <laughs> like, try, putting that, try putting that on your back though. And then carry and running with it. Yeah, that's it. It's absolutely With full kit. Horrible. Yeah, yeah that's Horrible. it. Horrible. And and so so no wonder, like, I don't want women I know going into that job. Yeah, that's it. I don't want them to look after themselves and do something that's less abrasive for them. Like, and don't get me wrong, there's like, I've come across some that, that could do the same as us. Sure. But they're few and far between. Um, And so most of the time, they take up roles where it's there's less of a requirement for yeah. physical robustness um but they still will occasionally because of the nature of military exercise just come up against things where oh shit i can't actually do this like and I'll, I'll need help with it and we're not and the thing i think i want women to know that again like you, you touched on it earlier right? like that's not us trying to say we don't want women to do that job that comes from just i think it's built into us genetically to have that protective instinct over women and females like, I don't fucking want you going into that yeah, place. Yeah, I'll yeah. fucking go in there and take care of it. I'll go in there. Yeah, so yeah. I don't want you to go in there and do that. I'd rather you, I want to come home to you, not the other way around. There's, there's also sure. another way of looking at this as well. We are, it's a very touchy subject, but we're constantly edging towards conflicts with countries that don't have women mm. infrastructure. Yeah, well. And then when you have, then you have to go to battle 
or go to war with these countries that are 99% men led um, yeah. armies and then we've got a 50% and they don't give a fuck about the Geneva mm. oh, Convention yeah, right. yeah yeah they don't care like yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, no matter what. Yeah. So yeah. basically, we, it's not it's not a smart move, I would say, on the on the West side, just to tick a box, just so we're no. like. But but that's uh, again. This is this is a symptom of anyone can do anything, and if you describe like the definition of sexism is is discrimination by sex, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Right. Of course, when sexism is used, it's used in a negative way right it, it of course has almost exclusively negative connotations so and because you will get the exception as well it's about keeping the doors open to allow that occasional exception through right oh sure. look here's someone that can carry 40 kilos and yeah, rifle, then fair enough you know, that's fair enough yeah. yeah crack on you know but but um and so that's where these rules have come in. It's like, well, hardly any of you are going to be able to do that. So like, let's, you know, so, and, and to be honest, like it's 99% true, isn't it? Mm. So, so it's like, it's not, it's not as bad as people make out, but um, as long as you, I think as long as you have it open and available, great, but don't tamper with the fucking stand, the entry standards. Like, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Like, because. So you then, you, you, like I say, you then start treading, no pun intended, dangerous ground. With, yeah. When you then do get into a, an actual conflict. You're yeah. Like, fuck <laughs> yeah and, and and the thing is as well like but the people pushing this sort of thing don't care they, they care more about having a certain ratio a certain representation within like every single workforce because because the, there's a certain brand of feminism and i'm like i'm not an expert on like all these different waves and stuff like that but like there's a certain brand of feminism which says like well actually women can do the exact same as men like what are you talking about? And that's just not true, like mm. for for most things. Vice versa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, There's a lot the things... of things they, they women can do that we just cannot do. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Generally speaking, there's of course there's ex- there's there's exceptions. There's like very sensitive, empathetic men and things like that. Sure. You know, of course. But like, you know, broadly speaking, these institutions. I mean, I've seen some really embarrassing clips on the internet of like two two female police. <coughs> people police women trying <laughs> trying to trying to like detain this guy and he's just fucking throwing them everywhere just, it's like yeah. a fucking judo ragdoll exhibition it's it's just it's just crazy like you know it's just it's just a f- absolute shit show and i w- i wouldn't want to i'd be embarrassed like if men were getting ch- I, i'm embarrassed by some of the male police officers I oh see, yeah, actually. yeah 100%. Like, as fuck. i'm like what are you doing man? Mm. what the fuck are you doing like they, they just <laughs> look like fat gamers. Some of them. You do think of the entry <laughs> requirements, don't you? I'm like, you look like a fucking fat gamer, virgin <laughs> gimp. Like, uh, uh, <laughs> just as, like honestly though, they do, don't they? You're like, I should really be scared of you as a, as as like as an a officer co- yeah, yeah, yeah. of the law. Not to I give too, America their copy. No, no, not America. The whole world. You go abroad. You don't fuck about with the police because you yeah, actually are like, intimidated by even, them. Mate, yeah. Even you go to even, Dublin, you do not fuck around with the girder, mate. Yeah. You do not fuck even around Spain, with the Irish police. You're like fucked up. Yeah, hundred percent. They will batter you. But we're, but we're like obsessed with like... <laughs> We've know. got the most lenient police, police I feel sorry for, I'm not gonna, I feel sorry for the police. I, I think the police <laughs> in, this U, in the UK should have far more power than they have. Yeah, like, yeah. If you, I think in this country, if you mouth off to a copper, he should fuck you up. Yeah. Like, who yeah. are you mouthing off to? Just... Well, this is like... <laughs> it's a bad time to say this because there's just been all this like scandal about like... Uh, about like sexual abuse and harassment yeah, yeah, yeah. in the yeah. force, right? Where like this fella's yeah, like under got, a lot of heat. There was a, this fella that got like one in four, one in four coppers that are under investigation at the minute are for either sexual assault or some sort of like um, uh, assault against women. In That's the, yeah, fucked right? up. Yeah, it's, it's bad. Yeah, it's bad. fucked up. Like, and and a lot of them were, like, were getting away with it for fucking years as well, mm. which is fucked. Totally fucked. Totally on the man's trust. Absolutely disgraceful. But do you know what's more disgraceful? Having having men in there that can't control their urges, yeah, yeah you know right, what I mean. I that's know. it's on like it's on us kind of thing, like yeah, thousand percent. Like that's that's also dis- that's also a disgrace, like yeah, because I agree. because men are I hate to say it, but like young men are are like undirected agents of chaos, like mm. and we've built we've evolved societal institutions to hem that in and direct it towards good purposes, like joining the army having these like really physical jobs like oh you can go build a fucking railroad across the country like you know you men don't have you hanging around doing nothing you'll fucking blow stuff up you know what i mean mm. you know just the stuff you get so you make it's like you just know this it's in you as a man like aggression to a certain degree is yeah, in you of course. and so these organizations <clears throat> like the army the police that have been typically masculine for years typically male um there will sadly be some 
at, at, at like the extreme end of that some residual sexism like built into it and stuff because it's a hyper masculine environment right sure but with that comes all the men that have been doing all the policing like who do you fucking call when you get assaulted on the street you call big dudes man they, yeah big men it, yeah. come and help you yeah. they come and change your tire as well and build the fucking roads and do all you know all this, yeah, yeah, all this shit like all this shit that makes the fucking world go around basically but um all these quotas and stuff it's just silly yeah it's silly fucked, yeah. it's just i think it's gone we were again we're having a similar conversation only the other day it was like you've got all the rights in the world now mm. like now now trying to just go too far like we were they're just i feel like they're just trying to throw digs for no but reason who is they yeah, though yeah. that's what i want to kind of dial down on because like w- would you say it's the woke agenda of politicians would you say it's feminism what is pushing this need for constant uh emasculating or co- constant need to emasculate men or make the uh yeah well yeah that's, that's basically it what is causing this force mm. the- so because like because for most of human history like masculine traits in males was desired wasn't just desired, it was necessary, mm. required, or you'll die, you'll, your whole tribe's going to die. That's right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's obviously ne- and it's still necessary today, by the way, just from all those jobs that I just mentioned. Um, I think people have associated that with, they've associated like all these bad behaviors, you know, like abuse, rape, etc., that men have engaged in, some men. Um, they've associated that with masculinity and being male. Mm. And so there's a tendency to kind of be like we need to emasculate you you know like and and like prominent prominent famous people have said like recently yeah testosterone's like a it's like a disease basically or it's, oh like, it's, like, it's like not a disease like but it's <laughs> some, you, something that needs to be reduced basically <clears throat> i'm like all right then reduce testosterone see what happens like yeah <laughs> I think it's a fucking problem. That I think we need more tests. Of course we do. Yeah. <laughs> we want more. There's already less kids being born and uh, yeah, well, underpopulation. Fucks, left, right, right, fertility, and, yeah. It's it, it, so, it, it, it already on the rise. Like it's like, yeah. what, if it goes too far, you're just gonna run under fucking. You'll have no population. Yeah, yeah. You'll have fuck all people. So about. like, who is there? You asked. Well, it seems to be like a small minority of people that are very loud, mm. and a lot of people not really question it very much unwittingly doing the bidding of that because yeah. there's power in like a, a multiplicity of voices isn't there of course there is. so like you know if there's if there's some sort of intellectual back into all this stuff which there is it's like i don't know you call it cultural marxism or whatever um there's you know really great thinkers that you can look at not not great in my opinion but like established philosophers and so uh you know uh, sociologists and whatnot that you can read that has like an that has like a more robust literature to this or the like that goes further than to say like we need more um representation in the workforce you know you, you might you might say you might hear someone say we need more women in the police we need more uh black and ethnic minority uh in the police and people will say that because because it's fair and they'll say like because of the equal inequality of outcome in the the the, the job in in the job uh, that that alone says that it's discriminatory in some way, but it's just a fact that like certain communities go for more of certain jobs than others, and it's not going to end up even. It's not going to end up with a perfect representation of the population. Ever. Yeah, yeah, no way, true. no way. Like, why is the why is there no women like cleaning the sewers? Like, why 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 is the why is why is there no women digging like, up the roads? Drainage and engineers. Plumbers. Like, oh, I want to put more of them in. Like, they're not crying out to get in there. Do you know no. what I mean? Yeah, so, well, so like, to do it, don't they? So, so like, yeah, but like, who is they? There is a, there is like a, um, an intellectual back into all this. It's not out of thin air. But these are like thinkers like Foucault, and people who are into this like, de- is it called deconstructionism? It's basically like all the institutions we've built, kind of like taking them apart for no, for no apparent reason. And then you find out that, oh, we actually built them for a reason. They serve a fucking purpose. Yeah, like, like the institution of like marriage and the family and stuff like that. You know, like big, like a big one, big one for men, which is going to be unpalatable now is, is, um, you know, getting married and having kids young because it gives you a responsibility. It, 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 you're, you're responsible to people that, that lean on you and it, it directs your, this kind of, you know, like aggression or whatever you have in you to, to overcome obstacles and go get resources. It directs it to something that's very productive, which is raising a family, like, yeah. which is, you know, and, and I, I heard someone say recently, like 
It doesn't matter what you what your job is, how you make your money, because your real job starts when you get home and how you raise your kids and cool. shit like that, mm, and like how sure. you relate to your family and the people closest to you. Love that. Um, and it's kind of true. It's like the biggest moral responsibility that you can take yeah, on is course. bringing up another human. That's right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and and this is the thing. Like I was listening to something the other day about the um, about the sexual revolution, right? The, the birth control pill and and so on, and it's not really made women any happier because for having all this choice, like sexually and whatnot. And it's it's been even worse for men as well because men of 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 course there's a lot of like horny dudes out there that'd be like oh people are just like <laughs> dragging around like great i'm gonna fill my boots and uh in a way you could argue that they are that those men are, are kind of like helping the feminist agenda helping the sexual revolution agenda by by playing into it do you know what i mean yeah i'm guilty <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure, I, I saw a few a few expressions then like, <laughs> he's talking no, about no, me but, no but like I say that I'm, I'm not saying this as, as like a religious person or like I'm certainly not um, I, I don't I'm guilty as well basically what I'm saying like we're all guilty but that's and you're a, you, and no wonder like we're products of our environment aren't we yeah of course and so it takes a lot to and, and a lot of luck as well to like listen to something alternative and think actually that seems that seems better like because there's something more important than your immediate pleasure and like how happy you are all the time you know what i mean like i would say meaning is probably more a, a, a better thing to chase meaning and fulfillment is better mm -hmm. things to chase than happiness because happiness is just obviously so fleeting i think i've only learned that in the last <clears throat> i'd probably say maybe the last two maybe three years if i started coming into it but especially the last two in the last year where i've really 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 learned how important it is to um be happy by yourself like oh, really wow, learn yeah. to and we spoke about this on multiple mm. times now on the pods and etc and again we want to express that to everyone male and female so everyone learn to be completely comfortable on your by own yourself, yeah. by yourself work on yourself like learn your own emotions learn what you want in life and leading on from what you're saying there mike in terms of you know chasing women and blah blah blah, blah. yeah okay we're all guilty of it but and again, me and Yo was only talking about this on, on the weekend. And we were saying that like, yeah, you, you need to be so comfortable and content by yourself because then you build on that with somebody else. And when they come and they're happy and she's you know content with herself, sure, you're still figuring stuff out as you go along, but she's like, I know where I'm at sort of thing. I know where my head's at. When you come together like that, it's, it's amazing. And yeah, okay, cool. You know, playing the game, as everyone calls it, is you know it's good fun and what have you. But... A short term pleasure. It is definitely short term pleasure. Like, don't get it wrong. Again, me and Yo were saying this the other day. If the right woman come along, that's it. I'd, I'd give it all up. Do you know what I mean? A hundred, hundred yeah. percent, and be like, right. Like, I admire those people that have been in relationships for a long time and and have built a foundation together and are strong and solid. I think that's fucking amazing. Mm. But at the same time, you shouldn't just settle. No, just no. for the sake I, of settling. No, no. I think I think a lot of people settle nowadays because they're scared of being alone. Yeah. And then I, I what I think to caveat that you you become a very dangerous person, like in a good way, when you're happy on your own because you now have, you're in control of your kind of own destiny. And then when you bring someone else into your life, you can be picky and choosy of who you have in your life because you are on thinking, right, oh, I don't want this person in my life unless they're going to add something. Whereas if you're not happy on your own, you start accepting anyone, and then you can lead into other relationships yeah, that are not good for you. It's like it's like it's like if you if you're in the desert and you really want. A fucking glass of water and then you find it you're like over the moon but then when you lose it you're completely it's like it's like when you've been single for ages and you've been through like this big fucking dry spell and then the next person you meet you're like over the moon with them and then you push them away because you're needy that's the that's the biggest the most useful thing to what you just said by the way is is like being feeling being okay by yourself mm -hmm. like because then that means you're not going to push people away and not going to be dysfunctional as fucking relationships but i do think like being happy on your own has to be has to come like to a limit because like there's a, I mean there's a lot of talk about mental health and stuff like that nowadays it's I almost roll my eyes when I hear that term because it's just mentioned so much and there's yeah. so much just yeah. rubbish around it and I think a lot of the advice on social media about like you know like learning your emotions and feeling your feelings and stuff like that you can you can just end up on this fucking endless yeah. circle right you can be too introspective 
you know, and like this, it's, it's like quite a common trope. You see it online, like, you know, men, you know, like these memes, like men go to therapy, men would rather do this than go to therapy. Like, so what? That's, that is our therapy. Fuck off. Like, yeah, you know, sure. we don't, we don't know, we don't all need to go to therapy. Yeah. We don't all need to cry. We don't need, we don't all want to wear dresses and shit. You know, it's, it's totally fine. And so I, I also think, I think being happier by yourself is, is great because then, you're not you're not coming into a relationship as like the weak link that really needs something because then you're going to drive people i mean it dry it, it, it'll drive your mates away if you like that not just yeah. women <laughs> you know so like for sure and and it's and it's tough because the we're a culture of we're basically all narcissists you know that like we basically are god like, tell me the, how no, well we literally are though by the truest sense of the word like we really care about what we look like you know just building this like we've all got these like show reels called social media we all are complete narcissists 100 is, is that a bad thing uh in a way yes and in a way no like yes because like we're so far removed from what is truly not narcissism <laughs> Uh, can you define narcissism because i'm not too just caring a lot about what you look like and people's perception of you basically okay yeah okay so caring caring what other people think is narcissistic is that the right word Mm, you should care how you're making people feel i think but but you shouldn't care about what people think of you really okay I didn't know that was the meaning because I just see girls on TikTok always throwing, he's a narcissist, he's a narcissist. Mm. But don't... Girls are way more narcissistic than men. Yeah, fucking hell. But they get away with it because it's like, because it's all, they're all, they're more, there's more of a culture of caring about your appearance, right? And and I would I would admit, like, we should be held to different standards. I think so. Yeah. If you're going to value anything, if you're going to have a value system, then sure, men should be held to different standards than women because we're different. Um but, but yeah, yeah, I don't get why. But that's a, when we were saying about um, uh, love a dad bod and all that. I get all that. But why don't you want to go? Like, why is it like people go? Oh, you go gym, you train. I like, think it's a blag that. I, I'm like, why? Bollocks. Why it's do you blag. not like the fact that your guy goes and plays football, or goes and plays rugby, or goes and plays you football, goes to the gym, goes running? He's an athlete. Like, why do you not like that? Because okay, yes, it's physical attributes and whatnot. But do committing yourself to a sport or committing yourself to regular some form of physical training and dieting and things like that doesn't just show somebody that they want to go to the gym and aesthetically look good it shows that they have a mental stability to push through days when they really don't want to fucking go and train and get to the gym and go running it shows that they are committed to bettering and looking after themselves in every aspect it shows that they when they don't want to do something when they, when they should be doing something else, they can cancel that and go and do what they need to get done. Not because they don't necessarily... Hang on, I lost my train of thought there. Fuck it. Not want to not get it done. They do it because they they have to do it. Yeah. And they need to do it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like discipline versus motivation. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, like, I always say this about when you're selecting a partner, let's say, like, long term. I think, like, is she into the gym? Is she into, like, some form mm-hmm. of exercise? I'm not bothered what it is because to me like the gym isn't is it's not a it's not or some form of exercise it's not a it's not like a just a hobby and interest no it's, it's a, a it's, it's a value yeah. well it's a value system mm. if if your partner values how they look like body wise <laughs> then you're not going to be there at like 45 looking at them going <laughs> do you know what i mean because because they don't have the value of like fucking hell better lose this weight or something like that. you should hear my mom and dad ripping into each other they're like like my mom will be eating like a cake or something and my dad will go hey you're fat enough you are like <laughs> none of them are fat they're fucking sh- like shredded like yeah, 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 yeah. they go running cycling well, they hold each other accountable almost and that, yeah that's yeah mo- but that's but motivation isn't it they're joke. they're joking yeah. but like but but they they both already individually have that mindset of like nice. i'm not gonna let myself go i'm gonna go for a fucking run. but again i was only having a similar conversation with my brother about this and i was thinking like i want to be my children's role models mm. And yeah. my wife. You yeah. should, yeah, you should be. I mean, that's your number one job. Like, 100%. I number thought she, one like, job. I, my mum and dad were great and they raised me. I grew up in a beautiful home. But I didn't look at my mum and then go, I want what they have. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. I couldn't think of anything worse than my kids saying that. I want my kids to talk about their mum and dad and say, I don't know what my mum and dad have got, but I want that. Like, my mum and dad get up and go for a run before they even get us up for school in the morning. Do you know what I mean? And then they take yeah. us to school and they come home. I see my dad... I see me cooking for their mum and cooking for them and making them breakfast and now when they're old enough I'll start taking the kid out running with me and boy or girl and stuff I like do that. think like, that is a generational thing though like obviously 
exception that the role of your parents, but yeah. nearly everyone's parents that I know have never been that active. They've yeah. not. Yeah. They've they've gone to work. True. They've done their shift. They've come home. They've popped open a bottle of beer and sat on the couch and watched TV and got a takeaway. That is, I would say, again, I don't know the statistic. I'd say probably ninety nine percent of the country in the UK mm-hmm. that that is their routine for that generation. Yeah, I feel like these. So this is the benefits of social media. I reckon so, social media is driving what we're aspiring to be like, being that person that gets up in the morning and does this, does that, be as productive as fuck, goes to the gym. I reckon we would, if we social media never come about, we would have probably fell, fell into the same patterns. Maybe as yeah, our parents have with the whole go to work, do your shift, come home, beer, yeah, watch TV, max. go to bed. That's, Man. That's that's social media used right. Mm. Yeah. Because I love it when people bash social media. It's literally how you use it. Yeah. Your news feed is literally a product of what you what you watch. Yeah. So who, like, and who you follow. So like if you, if you use it wisely, there's a lot of, well, I don't, I don't know if you call it wisdom, like, because it's a lot of sound bites, right? But yeah. There's a lot of good, there's good examples. There is a lot of good stuff on there. there. Yeah, there is a lot. But you can also see a lot of bad examples as well, right? And I think, I think it's a class thing as well, like the, the exercising and not mm. exercising. I think it's partly a class thing, socioeconomic thing as well. It's not pushed in school. Yeah. It's not pushed in schools. It's not. Yeah. Mate, well, I don't yeah, understand. No, again, like, this is a English part. maths is a, is a must. You have to do that. You know, you go to a Catholic school. We went to Catholic school. Um, religion is a must. You must study R and you must take it as a GCSE. I do, and I've never understood <coughs> why PE is not an absolute must. Mm. Because that's not bullying kids into exercise. No, your kids should be exercising, looking yeah. after themselves, keeping fit and keeping healthy and eating right. Like, I wish I'd started exercising like that from a much younger age mm. Mm. do you know not yeah. once through the pandemic did the government yeah. or anyone in power advise to like stay fit s- stay fit yeah. and stay healthy and monitor their food choices and there was a pandemic going on and they never once advised people to have a healthy living it took the, it took them a while didn't it, didn't it to mention that obesity is like a serious risk factor for the yeah COVID, it took them right? a yeah. long time to mention long that. fucking time do you know one of the main causes of um, one of the main causes of cancer is obesity? Did you know that? Yeah, no, I think no. I think it's number one or number two. Number one or number two cause of cancer is obesity. Yeah, no, I think yeah. one in three people do actually get cancer as well. Yeah, well, I don't say one in four men. Is but then it even now, if you look at get, um, is it testosterone? Test- uh, prostate, prostate, prostate yeah. cancer. Yeah. yeah. So what my point is is when you've got these when obesity is driving so many premature illnesses and avoidable yeah. illnesses why are we not educating the youth on healthy f- is, is, there, is there a so hidden agenda or is it is it just no. l- lack ignorance, of playing I, ignorance almost. I think I think it's 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 being a product of the of the society that, the, that we're brought up in right like I think that um like for example my mum was born in 1950 and when she went to school she said there was one fat person in the whole school one because because they weren't they didn't have TV. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. TV, obviously no games, no PlayStation. They would just go out, run around in the street, run around in the park, climb trees, play football, whatever. And then when the parents shouted them for tea, they would run in, eat whatever was put in front of them, and then go back out. <laughs> yeah. That was, it. that was that was like my childhood. I, yeah, so I, I, so I, yeah. outside, I Make sure you're have... home before the street lights yeah. are on. That was, that was, was never I, was. We got burgled, the PS2 got robbed. Probably no. the best thing that happened to me. <laughs> oh, right. Honestly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, and, wow. and since then, I've I've hardly done any game. I'm in PS ones. I mean, I've I three yeah, PS ones yeah. in my house for my three brothers. And I just yeah. try and use each one of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been two years since I've turned on my PlayStation. Two years. I two years in March. One, mate, well, wow. I think this is the this is the thing, right? There's um so so there's a quote by a quote. It's a lyric from Pink Floyd. It's um did you trade did you trade a walk on part in the arena for a lead role in the cage, something like that. Right. And it's basically saying like how sports and things like that have become this sort of, do you know the term bread and circuses? No, no, I've not heard that. So, so in the Roman empire, they would put on games uh, in the circus, which is just like a big, the thing that they did chariot racing in, right? Because circus, Coliseum, circus just means, no, it was, a, it's like an oblong thing with a right, central okay. reservation. So they would just race around it. For, right, okay, fine. Oh, I have many laps. And um, so they called it bread and circuses because they're throwing bread to the, to the lower classes like the plebs the plebeians and bread and circuses was like the distraction to keep people away from what the government are doing and shit basically so bread and circuses could be seen as any any form of entertainment that's just kind of like a passive consumption you know what i mean like watching tv watching the football look how invested people are at football games man it's insane mm. our joe said to me he's like you see people in the crowd like when when your team scores they're like 
yeah, like, sick, hysterical. Yeah. Do you, do you see anyone do that when the kids are born? It's insane. Wow. It's crazy. <laughs> Think about it. It's crazy. So that's like bread and circuses, right? So like, so people are, are sort of being taught through entertainment to just live vicariously through fucking Mo Salah or whoever else. Do you know what I mean? Not really, not really training themselves. Like sport, like sportsmen are great, can be great role models, right? But like, they're not meant for fan service. They're meant for emulation, emulation of their professionalism and stuff, like the dedication, stuff like that. The charity work they do, maybe like, they're, maybe they're quite benevolent. They're not meant for fan service though, because like, if you're just a fan of something, then you're literally just a fan. Like, what's what yeah. you get out of that? Like, yeah, you, you, it's it's literally just living vicariously through this fucking team or whatever. This group, yeah, wait, right, your, yeah, I've never, this, this, never ever this looked group like. of men that are like striving to you know overcome the other team. It's a very masculine urge, like. That's why it's only mainly men at forty. I can't imagine the system wants that. Like wants strong men like that. I think everyone's being conditioned to be yeah, he's, soft. Well, it's, they, it's, they're, they're well, doing, well it's, this is the question: is it, is it like a purpose thing, no, yeah, or is it like? And then, but then you have to say like, well, who the fuck's doing it then? Like, yeah, you know who's I mean? putting and, the strings? What, this is the thing with any like conspiracy like that. You you got to think like, at what level, like at what level in government do you get to when someone pulls you aside and go, hey mate, you made it. You're in the club. Yeah. Welcome to the Illuminati. Mm. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, yeah. like you like it's kind of it's like a boogeyman type thing. But it would, but but of course, it would be stupid and naive to say that like people don't have, you know, mal intent and stuff like that. The, that there are no people in the system that have like mal intent. Like because of course it's like it's a problem when people don't like watching mainstream news, isn't it? Because yeah. like you're not going to be influenced by it. I I will fucking t I'll just walk a mile away if I hear like mainstream news on it. Just someone someone had a go at me because I don't watch mainstream. Who news. horrible? But some I'm some kid that I'm not friends with anymore. But I actually said I was like, I don't I don't watch um, like mainstream news. And he was like he actually said I'm, I feel very um, what's the word? Um, I'm not embarrassed for you, but he goes offended. He's like, I'm offended that you don't watch. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, well, you need to keep up to date with it. And I'm just thinking, well, oh, yes. I feel like anyone who believes everything they see. It's from, a propaganda machine. From that yeah. is, so, he, so he's making the point. He's trying to say that you're ignorant and you don't care about exactly. global issues. No, no, I've got that. Exactly. It's not even that though, is it? I think there's other ways you can educate yourself to course, understand yeah, how yeah. things work. I but, fucking love reading about like geopolitics and stuff like that. Mm. What's the first thing you did when you got to mine earlier? You showed me, what did you get out of your bag and show me? Oh, it was a book yeah. by uh, Aristotle. Ethics, wow. yeah, yeah. Otherwise known as Nicomachean Ethics. So it basically talks about all these, basically traits. Like for example, uh, what's a good example? So like, at one end of this of of this particular trait, you have cowardice, right? The man who doesn't go out and fight when he should. And then at the other end, you've got like rashness, the man that's like rushes out too quickly and then maybe gets killed because he's been unwise and too keen to get involved. The middle, the mean. The golden mean, as it's called, is courage. Like knowing when it's appropriate to go and step up and have a fight with someone. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So like it's a bunch of these different um, different ethics that he describes. And he talks about the deficiency. And what's the other word? Like when you have too much of it. Abundance? Yeah, maybe. It's another word that with more like negative connotation. I can't remember. But like deficiency and whatever, you know, extreme or something like that. Really fucking interesting. The reason why I brought it up is like in today's <laughs> world, especially, well, maybe, well, I can't say I do this, but you, the first thing you was excited to show me is like, I got this book. It's very educational and it's only cost me like, I think you said two quid? Two pounds 60. Two pounds 60. Well, look at this book, two pounds 60. I'm thinking that's, that's probably what we're missing from nowadays because we're just fed short attention span shit all the time where we're not really educating. And then the easy option is to watch the news and be told what, what's going on rather than self-educating yourself to become yeah. more knowledgeable and wise and stuff. And um, do you know what's, do you know what, which is a scary thought? I have these thoughts when I'm in the shower and stuff. Like I'm thinking, that's when my brain's most active when I'm in the shower, funny enough. By the way, I heard something about, it's like a part of your neck or a part of your head that when you get like warm water on it in the shower, it can trigger these kind of Oh, that would be, that'd be why I think brain, of the like, craziest so things. So I've been in the shower for 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, pure like, debates in myself. Shower. It's just in the <laughs> back of your neck, isn't it? That? And you're like, yeah, yeah, that's it. Bro, I'm still running water. Though, so I just don't, <laughs> that just don't add up. <laughs> One of the thoughts I was having is like, because obviously, they, they, I've read a quote once, quote me if I'm wrong. Um, it's, correct me if I'm wrong, sorry, is the winners write history. Yeah, yeah. So who's to say, you know, like the whole, till, until 
recently, you've only had to rely on newspapers, radio, and television for your news and what's going on in the world and what's right and what's wrong. Mm. So how how many times throughout history have we been led astray by the government and not known about it? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, well, you know, like when certain conflicts kick off and we've always been told that's the aggressor. Yeah. These people are yeah, bad. Wow, yeah, but yeah, how, yeah, just because we live in the West, as well. yeah, yeah. Just because we live in the West, they're being told it's outrageous. We're the aggressor. Yeah, but who? Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? How can yeah, yeah, you, who, how do you define who it is? You Who's have to right, rely on right. that. And that's yeah. why so many things nowadays, I'm not going to get into politics and that because it's just not, sure, it's, yeah. yeah, it's a very touchy subject, but who's to say who's right in which conflict because of, just because your news outlet's telling you that's right and all the news yeah. presenters in the West are going. You look at, uh, like just prime example of this, look at Russia and Ukraine at the moment. The Ukraine flag has become this like thing that's been like adopted by people who otherwise would be like so against war, you know, people with like pink hair and blue hair and shit like that. Yeah. They're like, but because it's like the latest cool, I support, you know, you've seen that meme, I support the current thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it's got like a guy with a, a mask on, a Ukrainian yeah, flag. LGBT, like, yeah, LGBT, yeah, like, yeah. all this sort of shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I know a guy that makes t-shirts that says, I like, don't support the current thing, <laughs> actually. Oh my God. No, but, but when you look at Russia and Ukraine, the two got like Vladimir Putin, evil, blah, blah, blah. By the way, really bad dude read a lot about him he's done some fucking horrendous yeah. shit yeah yes. like really really bad no so no fan of russia or vladimir Putin. <laughs> but when you look at the ukrainian government compared to the russian government they're very fucking similar in terms mm. of like corruption and shit like that and this murky shit going on very similar yeah tip of the iceberg though yeah but again you could take it's... that i mean this is again extreme but you could take that right the way back to even something like the fucking crusade they were told that when we went down the when we done the crusade it was all for the good of England, for the good of God in God's name. And we mm. were purifying these people. And like, I mean, mate, no wonder that most of the world hates the UK because <laughs> once upon a time, and again, I mean, you're not taught in school about the British Empire. Yeah, that's mad, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. There one of the biggest re- empires no, ever. The biggest empire yeah, yeah. ever known to the man. Well, that's, it was, yeah, it? yeah, the British they Empire was the biggest were, empire ever known about about I can't remember shit yeah, yeah. about that. It, it, no, I was never taught about, about it nothing. until five minutes ago. No. Because, well, they're taught about it now, but they're taught about a very one-sided view of it. Of course they So we've lurched from what this side this one side of view to this one side of view and you know bal- a balanced view is looks like it's yeah. quite sorely lacking like there's right? a reason we owned all these countries there's a reason we didn't just we didn't just acquire them we went in and took them we, we, we turned up we country, raped and pillaged well, everywhere we went everywhere you went and the well, crusade the, like they again I mean, this is some of the stuff i've read about what again so i love history right but some of the okay i won't get into it too much and this side of things but what like Richard the Lionheart done? And I mean, there's days where they slaughtered ten thousand people, like women, children, men, in one day, mm. and like for for no reason, they <coughs> yeah, just yeah. Like, just because they didn't want them to then uprise against them and fight back, etc., etc. Like we, we we're, and we're not taught about that. So but the brother that- said a, an interesting quote to me not long ago. He said, "I mean, it's all coming out now, I don't know, so people can't argue about this, right? That they lied to us during the pandemic mm. about lots of different things. Yeah. So if they can lie to us about that." What the hell have they lied to us yeah. about? That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. There's loads of things coming out now. The US government declassifying certain documents, like certain scandals from decades ago. Yeah. The US are obviously up to all kinds. Of, the fucking if, if you go on the Wikipedia thing page about the CIA involvement in different yeah. countries, yeah. it There's says like it says something. It's like a warning at the top saying this is a very long page. <laughs> this might take you a while to read and something like that. Honestly, okay. oh. but the, the Crusades though, as again like partly religious fervor. Partly geopolitical as well, though, because yeah, of, of the because of like financial Muslim, gain. Muslim expansion, yeah, and partly as well as a distraction from the Great Schism, which is like this thing in Christianity, this rift between the Greek speaking East and the Latin speaking West, and the Church wanted to kind of like let's just unite and go on a big crusade, you know what I mean? But like, but yeah, I mean, it shows that everything if, from as far back as we can probably remember, and and since records began that everything that went on and goes on and still happens today mm. is part of some form of agenda agenda yeah, yeah. That's yeah there's, so, a, there's a purpose so, there's yeah, a secret so hidden these, agenda behind yeah, it somewhere. so the british empire being an example because i've seen a lot of stuff about this with the death of the queen uh and there's been this this kind of like review of like the british empire you know with all the blm stuff in 2020 there was a, there was kind of like a lot and, and you know britain's nothing like america in terms of it's like race relations yeah. the past the past with race relations nothing like it um <clears throat> Britain had a reckoning with its Britain had a voluntary reckoning with its race relations when it happened 
Do you know what I mean? They abolished mm. slavery in in the 1830s in the Brit- for the whole British Empire. Spent a shitload of money and lives on policing the high seas to make sure people were not engaging in slavery and and, and whatnot. Uh, you can look that up. The West Africa Squadron, loads of sailors got killed in stopping slavery. Like, um, and so all this all this stuff about the British Empire came out. And the reality is you need to look at every country differently because it wasn't like just guys in red coats like turning up with muskets and like throwing nets over people <laughs> and saying, well, we've got this land now. Prime example, India, like the, the jewel in the crown of the, of the British Empire, right? Inexhaustible, inexhaustible reserve of manpower for Britain's wars, right? And a huge market. The Mughal Empire had disintegrated. This is like an old decaying empire, but a very fucking rich one. Mm. So the French and the British are kind of like jockeying for position here. This is this wasn't a this wasn't a government takeover. This was a corporate takeover. Just what you said before about like all this stuff comes out eventually about mm. the wars. This was a fucking giant corporation, ruthless corporation for the East India Company. East India Trading Company. Turned, yeah, yep. yeah to the Honourable East India Trading Company. <laughs> turned up, basically employed, because India's massive, all these different states that kind of war with each other. So the Br- British East India Company turned up and basically paid some of them to fight against some others. And they- Yeah, they started civil wars, mm. everything. They started yeah, a lot yeah. of civil wars out in America and yeah, the Southern yeah, States, yeah. they caused a lot. Yeah, a lot. And, 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 but at the time, like we, we look back at it now with our own sort of eyes and say, oh God, it's so terrible. But at the time, it's literally, it's kind of like the meme, you know, the Donald Trump meme is like, I was a businessman doing business. Mm. These were business, these were just ruthless businessmen doing business, right? Sense, obviously, yeah. obviously resulted in some horrific shit. But like, if you ask the Indians at the time, if you said to them, like, this is it's just, it's just a note, this is a side note on perspective, having perspective on the past, right? If you ask the Indians at the time, like, what do you think of these guys coming in, these, these English businessmen coming in, like paying you guys? And they're like, great, I've got a job now. Like, I've got money. To- yeah, I'm getting employed. Like, to go- yeah, and like you hit the British in Ireland as well is another big one, right? You know about that. It was like a huge, yeah, of course, yeah. big history. Like 48% in the, in the early part of the 18th or 19th, early part of the 19th century, 48% of the Bengal army was made up of Irishmen. Wow. Half of it, Irishmen. This is at a time simultaneously when Ireland is like... At war, yeah. Under Britain's foot, you know what I mean? Technically speaking. So why are they going out and fighting for essentially Britain? Because at the time, you don't have... When you're trying to make ends meet and you're a poor dude from like Dublin or the countryside or whatever, you're not thinking about like, oh, I hate the British Empire. You're not thinking about all this ideology shit. You're like, how can I just make some money? Mm. The British Empire was a huge employer of, of, of Irishmen, for example, and Indians. So you have to think of that side as well. Although, you know, and, and I don't think it's even helpful to, to think of it as like, well, all, all considered, was it a net positive <laughs> or a net negative? I don't think it's, I don't think you can really weigh it up that way. It's just, ex, it's almost unfathomably complex. Sure. Two or 300 years of turmoil, you know. Um, but But this is, this is um, relevant because the British Empire essentially was the first attempt, first real attempt at globalization. And you could argue that it kind of did forge the modern world, like with the Industrial Revolution and whatnot. And so this is, this is kind of seen as like, and together with like Spain and Portugal and the other European empires that kind of like st- struck out across the ocean and took all this land and gold and shit like that. This is like, the great review <clears throat> by by these people right yeah. in the education system now is like this is really like we're basically really bad for for doing all this stuff people that, in, that are no longer alive of course but like it's basically gone from one extreme to the other like you but know the countries today like the world and the world today again leading back to obviously the whole topic of this wouldn't be where it's at today without these men I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't condone any of it from any side, from any country, from any sure, race, yeah, yeah, like, religion. Like that no, should be a it, you know, everyone has 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 done their fair share over 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 history, right? Of, of shit that they shouldn't have done. Yeah. But the world where we're at today, in terms of where the countries are, like it's got where we are today because men have fucking stepped forward and gone. I'm going to do that shit. I'm going to take that yeah, shit. I'm going to I'm course. going to do this and and I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but negative, yeah. we are where we are today in terms of technology, industrial industrial and things like that, but we're also in the shit because people have yeah. Uh, yeah, of uh, course. Uh, have gone the other it's way, but we all we are we have advanced from where we once were hundreds of years ago because strong men have decided to put their fucking foot forward and go 
we need to do that better. We need more of this. We need more of that. I'm going to take this. I'm going to take X. Again, that's not necessarily the right way about it, but we've progressed because men have stepped forward and gone, we need to fucking do that. Like, yeah. That's what we need to do in order mm. to better our country, but look after our people, gain more money, financial gain, whatever the case may be. And so I fear that that is that now going to almost take a bit of a step backwards in, the, in well, yeah. or slow massively down yeah. from the types of things that they're telling kids to do today like in america now when you ask a child what they want to be when they grow up the number one answer is i want to be a youtuber yeah. <sighs> that's the and number whereas um, but yet in the 50s 60s 70s it was i want to be an astronaut i want yeah. to be a race car driver on things so like, i want to be a youtuber that's the number one job yeah. that's not a job do you know what i mean well, it, it can be argued it is a job but i understand what you're yeah, saying okay, yeah okay fine it's, yeah it's a definition a mean, is a, a job to an end in terms of sure income. sure but that's not gonna well, Build our roads. That's not going to build our infrastructure. No, no. It's not going to make our no, buildings. Yeah, you're right. 100%. That's not going to, you know, that, you know, we need more engineers into, in you know, well, we need. looks like hard work, though, isn't it? Like being a YouTuber just sounds more glamorous to people. Yeah, being famous, well, having, a, just, having a blue tip by a name, having a certain amount of followers. Just see it as like a. If that, so true. That, yeah. That's what's more glamorous. Getting to something for so, nothing, very fashionable, like yeah, very trendy, and it sounds great. Easy life, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Do you reckon this is more in the in like the West though, rather than? other cultures because if for example we're talking about police force i'm thinking in turkey you do something you're getting battered in in the middle east you do that in, in dubai everyone's no, yeah. no one fucks no about one, in dubai no you, one, leave, yeah. you leave your phone out you leave your car out no one would take that <laughs> shit but here in a, in a minute mate someone would take your shit and do one yeah. but like in another country if you do that you're you're spending time behind bars you're actually getting made accountable for the, for the mistakes you made where here people got so much obviously the authority actually it's, has it's authority. authority exactly they, like, they could do whatever they want yeah, yeah. I had a guy in, in um, from, I had a guy that I used to train with from Q8 he was over here studying he was named uh, was Ghazi still follow him today and uh, I used to go and chill with him have coffee and tea with him he was a strict Muslim so he never went partying with me and drinking alcohol so we used to go, always go for tea or coffee and uh I remember sitting there and he, he used to show me he had a G-Wagon back home at Q8. He was my age. I was like fucking 24 at the time. I was like, you got, I got, you got a G-Wagon? He's going, yes, brother. It's, I have a G-Wagon. It's normal at in Q8 for me to have G-Wagon. I was like, oh, that's sweet. Okay. He goes, do you, do you want me to tell you something? I don't know why I'm doing this crazy accent. He's not, he's not Welsh. He's not Welsh. But um, he goes, do you want me to tell you something? He goes, I can leave my keys in my G-Wagon with the ignition turned on, go to sleep, wake up. My G-Wagon will still be there. and The engine will still be running in the wow. morning. He goes, you try to do that around here. He goes, no chance. Nah, bro. And now it used what? to blow my hour. mind. He used to blow my mind. He goes, he goes, hour, he goes, this is the Middle East. This is how it happens yeah. here. Because no one wants to fuck about because everyone respects the authority. Yeah. And that's what we've we've lost here in the West Proper, is yeah. we don't respect the people that are supposed to. Supposed bro, to. Like, yeah. And the thing is as well, like you get caught, you get a slap on the wrist. Like there's, yeah. so, oh, there's, yeah. there's people that commit the most maddest of things. And I'm not going to say what they are, but those little kiddie for this mate and they get a little slap on the wrist yeah, so, so but like, if you if you were to go carry something like all right a class drugs and by all means if, if you're doing a madness or whatever but you get you put get 25 you, years, you get exactly 25 yeah, years yeah, you get so put away for a shitload of time another, you get armed robbery it's, 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 it's like it's like where's the justice within Sentencing that Sentencing is really fucked isn't it yeah no bad. but but um did, did you have a question before before he started no no no, no about go for it. yeah so so i think um like you're saying, a lack of respect for authority. Was that, yeah. Did you just say it? Yeah. Well, it's it's like, this is the thing because I think underpinning all this is we're in like what you might call the cult of the individual, right? That what the, the, the most important thing is how I feel at any time, like and my, mm. my personal pleasure and like how I feel, making sure I feel happy all the time and good feelings all the time. And any sort of, any sort of institution that you know seeks to sort of encroach on that is like an imposition on your life and the authority not respecting the authority i think stems from that because it's like you're encroaching on my freedom sort of thing i should be free to do what i want even if yeah. it's like what the fuck it's it technically is. fucking illegal or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah i just think it's part of that ideology it's like seeped into the justice system do you not think it has a bit of it matches up with their religion of their country do you reckon because they're strict devout Muslims in these in the Middle East it kind of falls in line with the their culture as as a society do you reckon that is it because uh, yeah because there's a lot of obviously talk about the reason why the West is failing or seem to be failing the religion's going out the is window. because religion when no one got yeah. no one fears God yeah, yeah of course yeah but but like it's not just that um see I think religion gets a really bad name today 
because, of course, you know, there's certain atrocities that have been committed in the name of religion, and you can argue all day as to whether that's human nature and they've used religion to justify it or whether religion is, like, the driving force, because religion in itself depends how you use it. Mm. it in and of itself, it's, it's like inanimate scripture, do you know what I mean? It's like, it, it, it depends who it's in the hands of, and people will argue all day as to, you know, when, when, when a religious, religiously inspired terrorist does something then we have all these debates don't we as a society like you know but anyway i think that um it, i think it was nietzsche that said like we've killed god and we haven't replaced him with anyone right that's what people are running wild yeah well, yeah well. But because and i think religion doesn't get given the time of day from young people nowadays because we're in this like cult of the individual because it's seen as an imposition it has rules like because god demands things from you do you know what i mean it, you have to like step up and do this and you have to get married and like there's, there's he has, God has something to say about everything you do in your life. You know what I mean? It's really intrusive. And if someone gets in the way of the pleasure that I want to have, the, the hedonism that I want to engage in, then it's, it's an imposition and it's bad mm. and we must like get rid of it. Yeah. You know, because, and that's, that's just a self, that's just because we're increasingly self-centered, aren't we? That's, yeah. that's it. It's People aren't holding themselves accountable to anything anymore. I mean, they no, haven't got was... they haven't got God to hold them accountable yeah, as well. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah. So they don't yeah. they, never, they don't have a God or they don't have any. They're just like like I say, everything they're doing now is almost just for their own selfish reasons. Yeah, yeah, of course. And and again, yeah, like I said, in schools, it's not religion's not pushed enough. No, no. Like, like it's just, it's I don't think you should be force fed no, religion, it's... but I think you should be educated on religion. I don't feel like everyone should go. You need to be this religion. Like my parents sent me to a Catholic school, primary and secondary school. I will. Um, I, I'm technically on paper a Catholic. I've done. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've yeah. been baptized. I've done, uh, done Holy Communion. I'm a full blown Christian. I went to Christian schools, church, blah 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 blah. But that's because my parent, well, my dad's, my dad's a Muslim and my mum's a Catholic. My dad's not a practicing Muslim, but my mum is a Catholic. So she decided, right, you're going to Catholic school. So that's mm. what I did, right? So then inherently I become a Catholic. So I, I don't know whether you should be, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what the solution is because I don't know whether I should have that choice <laughs> growing up or my parents should have made the decision for me like they did. Do you know what I'm saying? So how, I, I, how do I you position think that? I, until you're about, well, it's different for different people, but like as you, when you're a kid, you're fucking stupid, man. Mm. Yeah. Kids, kids like don't sponge, know You shouldn't really make any decision kids by yourself to you. Your minimum kids 16, are so minimum. dumb. But again, this is, the, this is the thing. If you try and make kids go a certain way, it's seen as like indoctrination. They need, kids need structure. They need guidance. They yeah. need structure. Yeah. They'll be just scribbling on the walls all day and doing this crazy shit. Yeah, true. Kids are fucking wild, mate. Yeah, proper. And they're stupid. Well, so they're they need like a structure. Need guidance. Do you, do you think need it's guidance. a good thing? What? <clears throat> that, that, like, not, you're not told to be this religion, but you're edged no, but, towards... No but, no, but look, right? Whether it's religion... Let's say it's not religion. Let's say it's something else. As a parent... It's on you to raise your child with the values that you want. Yeah. You want that child to have. If those are religiously informed, <sighs> then yeah. You know, and you could do much worse than raise your child religious. You could do much, you could do far worse. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's a bad thing at all. And and by the way, I think a lot of young people are not attracted to religion is because they see it as this like I was saying to you in the car, like, this like <clears throat> musty old archaic thing. Or we don't need we don't need religion anymore. Like you know, because we know we, 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 such bollocks. And and, I'm, and it's like, hang on a minute, like people are perfectly like like stoicism for example has become very trendy like online now. You know, you see you see like people like Ryan Holiday pushing his books and whatnot, and it's like. There are only so many good ideas, right? You know, Marcus Aurelius wrote his wrote his meditations two thousand years ago, and there's a reason why it's like one of the best selling books ever. You know what I mean? But Christianity contains Stoicism, except without some of the drawbacks. Do you know what I mean? It's sure. it's it's scripture that's been that's been refined and refined and refined over the over the ages by all these like saints and priests and whatnot that are extremely well read uh and the the reason that people aren't willing to read their scripture is because of the name religion but you'd be perfectly willing to read like philosophy or some other yeah. doctrine or some other teaching so i think we throw religion out at our peril um i know people that go to church every week but they don't actually believe in God. They're like, yeah, yeah, I go to church every week. Yeah, I just think it's That's good. Insane. Think That's it's a good. crazy stance. Why though? Why? Why? Because of, because of the values that Christianity demands of you. <laughs> right. Okay. Fine. Doesn't like sure someone wrote the Bible. Do you know what I mean? It didn't just turn up. It's man made. Sure. Whether someone thought they were inspired by God or not it doesn't matter. The point is, it breeds community, common yeah. values. Yeah. 
and you know you could do far worse in today's world because like because like who's who's raising your kids if not the church like and if not you yeah the fuck your fucking phone is yeah the ipad the phone that you give them's raising them like the ipad that you give them and it's teaching about 47 different genders mate yeah, yeah. oh my god like i've got i've got nieces that are like in the early 20s right yeah i've got mine uh two three of them are- gone toilet lads should hear some of the shit they come out with. Oh, that's crazy, isn't it? Late. But again, they don't even know what they're talking about. Do you know what I mean? Like one of my nieces is 21 now and she's studying to be um, a um, graphic designer. Mm-hmm. Smart as fuck. Yeah. Like so intelligent at, at 21 years up. But again, pretty, I mean, give my brother his due. He's, my brother's dyslexic. He's just not that way inclined at all. Right. Yeah. But he's got three daughters. Do you know what I mean? And hard, 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 tough, hard man. work. Do you know what I mean? But he's just not, he's just from a different world. All my brothers are they're quite a bit older than me, but they're, they're literally just from a completely different world. So that, like, I remember the first time when I was younger, one, two of my brothers actually saw me put air spray on. They were like, what the fuck are you doing? Do you know what I mean? Like, they just don't get that concept. They're so, yeah, yeah. they're so old school in that way. They're like, they yeah, just yeah. wouldn't understand what that sort of thing. But he hasn't, like my brother Jay has not pushed anything on the girls in that sense. Like mm. he's quite spiritual and things, but He's just like, make sure you become fucking well educated and clever so you can stand on your own two feet. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of expectation like from parents as well, from their kids, because and they're they're obviously scared as well. Like raising a kid nowadays, man. Like I, I think about it. If I have a kid, what would he be like? Personality, like who is he gonna hang around with, like all these little things. Obviously you do what you can. They're exposed to too much, like, they're exposed to so much and it's yeah. out of your control. You're because, losing battle, yeah, yeah. Li- that's literally what it is. And it's like whatever's whatever's happened in society and whatever's popular. That's essentially the route they're going to go down. And that's what they're going to evolve into. That, like you're a product of your environment. You do what you can with mm. your kids, nurture them, and guide them to be the best. Or well, whatever you believe is the being. H- however you believe is like being the best person is what you try to teach them. Mm. Whether you believe that or not, that's what you do. But people around them, it's going to be it's scary. Like it's going to be. To, I think to myself, I don't want to give my uh, kids phones and things like that. But then then they're going to be ostracized for not being the cool kids for not having Mate, like, um, so yeah, I can't do that to my kids like, like, stuff, I yeah. remember growing up like, like having, not having certain shoes and yeah. thinking like fucking up. like my they're kids going to put that for pressure it. on me mm. yeah yeah but then I, I need them to have a phone because I need to get hold of them and I don't yeah. know where they are and they need to phone me or they need to phone their mum and stuff so it's, how, how do you find how do you, how do you manage fun? it yeah like oh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. like as well as religion and things like this I think just purely have like I don't believe anyone should work on a Sunday that no one used to work on a Sunday I work every Sunday that, ju- that was literally just family day spent, like people don't spend enough time with their families now mm. Some uh, I was listening to a podcast not too long ago and um, he asked the question how many times do you see your parents um, so oh, I hate this I, I watched this yeah, my, uh, my old man lives way out in the countryside now he moved out of out of, <clears> out of the city and I try and see him once every once a month mm. then I relay that back and I think I only see my dad 12 times a year. Wow. That's mad, isn't it? And same, do you know what I mean? When you put it like yeah. I think, right, okay, cool. So my dad's nearly 60 now. It's hopefully he's got another 25 years in him, 30 years in him. Mm. That's not a lot. When you really do the math when, on when that, I think, down, that's not, not a fucking lot of times. My mother's no, a whole different story, I mean, but like kids now and families now, they are not spent, they don't, family quality time, I feel like is, nah. if it, it is none and void. It just doesn't yeah, yeah. exist anymore. In, in, like, the right? West, yeah, yeah. in the West. In the West, yeah. Because like we were speaking earlier, in, in, you go to certain places in Africa, you've got three generations living in one house. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. normal. It's not, yeah, it's not yeah, frowned yeah, upon yeah, yeah. to yeah. live with your parents. Yeah. It's not fr- they all live in one, one big house. One central house. Yeah, that's it. And you'd bring your wife, other, like, yeah. Yeah, you'd bring your wife into your family home with your parents and your grandparents. Yeah. And I that's mean, normal. I'm grateful because like my grandmother pretty much raised me and I lived with her for four years and, I see her every week when I go to London. I stay over and stuff. So I see her every single week. And I think to my dad and my mum's a whole other story. But like, I wish I knew when I was younger. I think you need to spend more time with with your mum and dad and do mm. things with your mum and dad. Even mm. if you find it fucking boring, even if you're doing something that you don't necessarily want to do, I think youngsters today need to realise that like life goes fucking fast. Yeah. You know I mean? And like, so your parents and your family unit should give you. And again, your parents, you, you know, your parents, you get off your fucking phone and stop watching the fucking football and spend some time with your kids and go and play with them, go and yeah. take them out, take them to their the sport, make sure you're right? home to take them to their sport and pick them up from school and shit. Like, or I think that whole thing with tying all of this into one sort of massive conclusion in terms of the schooling system, religion, what they're seeing on social media and what families are doing, like, if a family unit is strong and solid, I believe that also then drives a hell of a, again, being a role model for your kids yeah. drives a lot yeah. of morals and drives yeah. a lot of um, aims say. to look at kids and go, 
I, I want to be like my mum and dad. Like, that's, Mate, that's what... do, do you know what? I could, I could actually like kind of relate to this massively because from what you're saying, it's like my, my parents aren't together, right? So mum and dad divorced. Growing up, I saw a lot of broken families around me mm. and I've only ever had one relationship that lasted about a year and that's it. So I'm thinking there is some sort of like trauma from my, from my childhood to yeah, some sort sure. of respect, which I hold on to and think, I don't want to be in a relationship because I feel like that's how it's going to end up. Yeah. That's how it's going to be. Yeah. And then like fast forward, like my best mate, he's, he's got a, a lovely little uh, baby girl now. He's with someone, his family is like this. They're a unit mate. Yeah, so I'm proper. like, mm. when you, when you look at the traits, you've got, a, you, it's, it's all about breaking the cycle, but essentially, like I was saying before, you're a product of your environment. environment. Yeah. And I think to some sort of respect, this is why I find it difficult to, to, to want that as well. This is, the, I was going to say like the family is like the family unit is like, I think so fucking important mm. Yeah, because, because you, you're going to get, if, if you do, if your parents do break up or if you don't have a good relationship with them or whatever, you're going to get family elsewhere. They're just not going to be blood. Yeah. You know I mean, right. you're going to, you're going to look, you're going to look to someone, you're going to latch onto someone, you're going to find role models like for better or worse. Sure. But like, it's very fucking handy if it's the people that you live with yeah. and were born yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, ideally here's some, here's toxic masculinity for you. Getting someone pregnant and getting off and not being a good dad. Mm. That's fucking toxic, mate. That is toxic. That, that is toxic. Yeah. That is toxic. Yeah. Proper, yeah, you're proper a cunt. You're, you're a cunt if you do that. That's proper fucked up. So I've been in. Don't get wrong. We might have all been in a bit of sticky situation sometimes. You think, oh, that could have led sticky to something. Yeah, that, that could have led to something. <laughs> but you know, hopefully, you trust the girl enough, and you you have that sort of conversation that yeah, and that trust with each other that it's like okay, cool, like we know what this well, is sort of thing. Let's that, not let's not yeah, go yeah. down that road, like because yeah, yeah. I don't want to be that dickhead. This, this well, this well, this is it. Mean? Like like uh, having sex might lead to. Yeah, that's right. Being yeah, born. that's right. It's that's, that's funny that, isn't it? It's mad that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> funny so that. Like, so like, why, why do you think that, um, you know, that the, the Catholic Church would say don't have sex outside of wedlock? Yeah. Well, I, I'm Muslims. Just, I'm, it, I'm yeah, like, of course. Yeah, yeah, religious, like religious. All religions really communities. shouldn't have sex before marriage. Yeah, 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 they, yeah. It's, it's like, this is the order of events. Um, you meet someone, you get married, you fall in love, then you have sex. Not like you meet someone, you have sex, maybe you fall in love, Maybe, maybe you get married. <laughs> like, have a kid, yeah. split up. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, well, so, like, you know, and, and the thing is, like, it's not, it's, that's just, that's just what it is. Like, if you have sex with someone, you might get the pregnant. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah it might happen. That's what it's for, like technically. <laughs> yeah, it's it's right. Right. So like, it's so like, so like, it's not. It's so it's not like because obviously we just had this giant fucking abortion debate in, in the US, in the US right? yeah. So like, and I was trying to listen to both sides of that because like you know. What's the, what's the view that you hear from most people like on social media and stuff? It's most uh, pro abortion. Yeah, yeah pro abortion. Yeah, group. absolutely. It's, yeah, it's the it's the woman's body. It's her choice. Yeah, yeah. Her, but but then it's like, well, if you if you're pro life, it's, it's someone else's body as well, right? Because it's life. Yeah, it's all that's all. Not going to get into that. Like, yeah, yeah. So it's like, and I've I've heard very very convincing arguments on both well. sides. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's, um. But yeah, I hear you. But, that's very true. Yeah. Yeah, mm. it's very true. Yeah, Again, I, 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 do you know what? When we talk about subjects like that, I always sit there and go, "I'm not. I'm a man, so I, yeah, I, I should, never understand. I should never. Yeah, of course, yeah, never I should really have a woman feels like. Yeah. Yeah, well, we have that luxury, don't we? Yeah. But you know, they have other luxuries, I think it's, it's, other things that they don't have to worry about. I think it's mad that we don't have a choice if someone does get pregnant. Like it's it's obviously you do have a choice. Like, you do have a choice. But, but no, you do but, have a choice. You no. shouldn't suck your dick in. That's the choice, isn't it? That is the choice. That's your choice. You made your choice. You made your choice. Essentially, if she wants to keep it and you don't, then you're you have to play alimony for that's it. You have to, yeah, you're, you're tired yeah, of right? right, yeah, yeah, because it's because it's deemed as like an extension of her body, basically. Mm. It's a fucking weird subject, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, it's a weird yeah. subject. I feel like we need some, yeah, we need some just, women, we need he's some just women. scared yeah. of the comments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck the comments, I don't give a fuck about the comments. No, we need some women well, here, don't we? Well, some, don't understand their perspective. Well, but, some but, people are saying though, like if you're gonna if you want to keep the child and I can't. I don't have a decision, then I shouldn't have to pay alimony. So they're saying there should be like a, oh, no. a law in place. In my to say, opinion, if you've got you, her pregnant, that's your responsibility. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah but now yeah, you've made forget. your bed. Like, yeah, that's but your that, that, if you if you done that, sweet. But what about in the in the in the cases where women do it on purpose to get impregnated by certain people? You still made the choice to put your dick in her. Yeah, you still, fair yeah. enough. But like, you want to judge that girl's character yeah, but, better? Like, yeah, you no, still right, imagine you imagine you're. I'm just going to create a hypothetical scenario. You're 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 dating someone. You've on paper they ticked all of these like boxes. They're this or that, you obviously end up sleeping with them naturally as you do. And she says, I'm on the pill. So she's, but she's not, she's doing it in a way to, and it's probably happened, right? She's doing it in a way to, 
uh, will Track, someone in yeah. because whether they're successful or they yeah. know they can get money, they're going to be looked after. So what about in that case when a poor man has been conned and made put, or put in a situation to to have to yeah like find himself in that situation or there's even cases like, I, I, there's, sorry not to not to keep waffling but there's even a case where like guys have like passed out and women have taken the condom that the men have like slept them with him and trying to put him inside them mate to, that, to yeah. get impregnated there's even that, situations yeah. like that yep. and if they do he's still entitled to pay for that yeah where's the justice in that that's not fair there ain't there ain't any yeah that's it but, but where do you how, but, how do you draw a yeah, line but well. then again but then if you're pro-life regardless of the circumstances it's still killing babies is wrong yeah that's it like and you know, if you're pro life, yeah. If you're pro life, yeah. And you know, you can get into these debates like when does life begin? And like people who are pro life will say, well, life begins at conception just because you're not yeah. fully formed. Yeah, that's right, yeah. You know, you can't. That, it's, yeah. it's, not, it's not to say that you're less humane. It's such a about, broad spectrum there. Because what about, cause like, what about who are people who are disabled and they're like, their brains are not all there? Are they are they fully formed? Like, or, you know, there are all these arguments. Do you know what I mean? But again, but, I suppose this leads back to everything we spoke about in the fact of guys and girls <laughs> for this matter. Be very picky and choosy about who your life partner yeah. becomes. Exactly. Yeah. And this, and this yeah. is the thing about guys. I do think sometimes if you're a pro, if you're a simp, yeah, if you're a simp, if you're a a, simp, yeah. if you're a simp, if you're a, if you're a bitch of a man, and you can't call the judge, I'm, I, f- I feel like I, I, hopefully, hopefully this doesn't backfire on me, but I'm a pretty good judge on, on women that I choose to interact with because I'm, I'm I'm quite I'm quite I'm picky. Interact. So politically and, correct. And, so no, I, and I know I, I know who potentially could give me trouble down the line so I'm quite down the line. yeah mm. yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> she's gonna give me an STI no, but you should you... be a politician to be honest you're quite well polished oh, mate, I, I, that's why he's in sales so. <laughs> no, that's exactly why I'm in sales <laughs> but basically the point I'm making is I'm quite good at identifying someone I should and shouldn't be interacting with because of yep. X, Y and Z right sure. and I believe that's because I understand I, like, I'm just good at reading people and I've educated myself to know that's bad and that's good yep. and I feel like men get head over heels over certain women because they're like she's so hot she goes I don't really want to sleep with her I want to get I want to get hold of her and then they let their emotion control them instead of their logic, logic yeah, yeah and that's then, agreed that's, and then, I've always said this as well. and then they end up yeah. in situations like it's, that because they become emotional rather than um, logical that's that's called lust yeah mm-hmm. that's called yeah. lust in fact, religion, like Christianity, for example, has has a lot of a lot to say about lust and about follow uh, not being a slave to your lust. Yeah, you know what I mean, so, yeah. and that is that is what is that's literally what is the driver to casual sex. Men have it? got to learn to control. Yeah, yeah. ask ourselves, you've got to learn to control your sexual urges. Well, this is what you've got the, really funny it. We, before because it because by the way, sorry, to go off. that's right. By the way, it's easy for us. It's easy to sit here and say like, oh, you know, you should be like a bit more devout and a bit more like judicial about who you spend time with. You should like. You should, you know, it's easy to, to say, like, to make the re- the devout religious argument and say, like, no sex before marriage, blah, blah, blah. But don't say that if you've never had the options of sleeping with loads of girls. Like, because then, That's cause true, then so, cause yeah. the, if your temptation isn't there, it's easy for you to fucking say that. Yeah. Sure. It's like if, if, like, some, like, fat gamer says, like, nah, I can't be bothered fucking other chicks, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, you never had the option. Exactly. Yeah, 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 right. like, so, right. so you can't say that, like, but people will trick themselves into that and say, "No, nah, this is why I'm just choose. I'm just choosing not to, bro." You know. But it's like you never had the option. So yeah, like, so true. Ten, if they did, they'd probably do it, right? Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. so well, me and Mason, but, were, like, we had a <clears throat> discussion before we way before we started this podcast back in back end of 2022, and we said, "No, we basically stop giving into your urges, and that because you become a better person when you don't give into your urges." And I'm not gonna lie, I've, I've caved a few times, and it's been very difficult. But like. I'm just sat open on the pod. I don't, I don't, get, I don't care because I don't know all of me and all my friends do. We all watch porn, yeah. right? We watch yeah, porn. Sure, yeah. And then I, we, I, I knew it was coming. I was coming. just waiting for him to say it. <laughs> I've got the courage. Four <laughs> boards, it's taking me to get here. It's taking me <laughs> four boards. I watch fucking porn, right? Yeah. Listen, so I, look, Did you they, say you watched it yesterday, bro? I, was, I, I think I watched it yesterday, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, hear me out. No, wait, wait. So <laughs> back in uh, November, me and Mason said, right, we need to fucking stop watching porn. That's Bro, I've yeah. had the same comment. Yeah, so so it's yeah. a coincidence. It was November because oh. I heard of this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we we promised each other no porn, and we actually did it. We didn't we didn't watch porn for two whole months, the whole whole of November and the whole of December, and we held ourselves accountable. And the reason why we said no to porn is because <clears> it's a very easy dope. It's an easy reward system. It's, yeah. you're giving yourself yeah. quick it's, dopamine it's, fixes it's by right. by watching porn is literally your right. You're giving into urge. It's so easily accessible to w- watch this shit on your phone. It's, it, it's not you can get anything you want on your phone now. You can it's click not, it. Yeah. It's a dopamine fix. You're given to an urge of this dopamine and to, to receive this reward, 
And it's just so, it's, it's so um, short lived. It's yeah, such, yeah, such yeah. a short lived. You know um, <laughs> what are you laughing for, man? No, no, but, no but it's the same. It's, <laughs> it's true, it's true. It's true. It's he didn't want me thing. to expose him. Yeah, he watches yeah, yeah, too. It's just, it was not that. It's just funny the way it's come out. It's the same out, thing, right? We, like, obviously, like, we, we all watch or have watched porn. The main shame is the fucking categories that you're watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you watching? 100%. So 100%. I'm not getting into it. <laughs> no, no, boys, that's, that's a fu- such a fucking good point, right? Like, when it comes to porn side of things, yeah, guys, you can bash out two, three fucking tuggies a day, like, do you know what I mean? Just to release some fucking demons, <laughs> yeah? Tuggies. We've tuggies. all been there. Fuck you now. Right, but, boys, like, <laughs> trust me, when, like, watching porn and that, what again? What it does? No, watching porn de- desensitizes you. Desensitizes you. It does, it does massively. Because like, you're oversexed, right? Sure, you're like, just like say, some of the stuff you watch, a woman's not what they want. No. Yeah. It's no. outrageous. You're like, watching some major things on there, right? Yeah. Some major fucking things on these Heavy, porn, mate. on these porn videos, these and then fucking you get compilations of fucking fucking sex. Yeah, it's like you couldn't replicate that unless you had twenty girls in the room. Yeah, and then you could fuck them all night. Do you know what I mean? You'd have to flip flop a blue one and just go at it all night long. Give it a good go. But when like the, the reason why we started this again because it's coming out more and more now about um, uh, how we're becoming almost a sexless society for men. Like men are having less sex majority. Like uh, apparently, if you got of men are having a small less percentage sex, percentage of yeah. them are having all the sex. Like, Correct. Yeah. And, that's, and that's partly due to women as well. Like they were sleeping with the same men. Women, no, no yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. all the women are want like the top five percent of men. Yeah, yeah. that's basically. right. And so watching that's this so porn, fun. boys, is like, and not only that, not only is it desensitizing you to what you then actually receive in the bedroom and how you then you go at it and, you know, you might only fucking last 10 minutes. Do you know what I mean? You think, Two minutes, bro. Yeah, oh yeah. 10, <laughs> fucking 10. <laughs> round of applause, oh. 10 minutes over here. That's and one minute of foreplay as well. And you think to yourself, like, was that it? Like, was that all just made up to me? I'm watching this. You know, and then you start to think to yourself, fuck this, I'd rather watch porn and have a wank and it's over in fucking couple of minutes, do you know what I mean? Mm. So and you, then you, and then you, you don't you have stop. to get a shower and get ready and all that shit. Like, you don't have to go out, spend money on drinks. But you start not wanting to do that. That's the cheapest thing. Of course, they start, yeah, yeah, they start not no wanting option. to chat to birds. They start not wanting to go yeah. actually meet birds, have relationships, um, sleep around and, and sort of figure yeah. out your sexual Eat. urges. Like, you need to cut that out of your life, this boys. Is, even people this is the thing. This is the yeah, thing, right? Because porn is so accessible like that, right? That's that's why some people don't actually have sex. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, because yeah, it's right, right there. Yeah. But to someone who has a lot of options as well, girls could be just as accessible as porn. Yeah. Almost, you know. Think of it like you're a celebrity or something like that. So yeah. someone who just gets women thrown at them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you've got to think that's this. That's it's because it's the same human nature. It's the same problem. Human nature hasn't changed on on any level of the game that you're playing. Like if you're sat in your room because you work there on some on a, some sort of online business or whatever, you can just flick over to Pornhub or whatever, not go out like no no questions asked. Someone else who has like loads of girls at their at their availability, like I think like kings and people like that who had like harems and stuff at like the Ottoman harems, like. Not what I'm saying that I heard something the other day that the the, the average would, young boy today has has seen more beautiful naked women. Than the most powerful kings in history yeah. ever got to see in their lifetime. That's insane, so yeah. That, that is that is mental, mate. That's that so is that up. is insane. So, boys, do yourself a favour. Cut it down to maybe a tuggy a week. A tuggy. Dude, a that's week. what we did. We yeah. said we said a tuggy a week well, acceptable. Not yeah. funny, boys. Every now and again, you think, you know, I can't even be bothered. It's like, do you know what? Two minute tuggy, <laughs> boom, done. But don't watch porn. It might. Yeah, I was gonna yeah, say it yeah, might yeah, sound boring, but do it without porn. Do it without porn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard so there was like a challenge to this. So it's like there was a guy. Do you know Mark Manson? Yeah, wrote the book. Yeah. He wrote another another book called Models ages ago. It was like because he used to be a dating coach, right? Well, like a pickup coach basically. And he talks about he's pretty good. And he talks about um, he calls it like the Mark Manson uh, masturbation diet or something like that. <laughs> like the masturbation ma- diet. Like the like this, this plan of like not doing it. Right? Yeah. And um, he was saying like you can do it like once a week or something, but you can't watch porn. Yeah. And you can't really look at anything. You just got to be thinking about oh. someone. You've oh, just, just th- for. You got to be thinking wow. about someone that you've met in person in real life, but haven't slept with yet. Wow. Okay. <laughs> but haven't slept with yet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you can't even think of an old time. Oh, wow. That okay. could not, yeah. So, so something like that. There's a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. No. But, oh, okay. But anyway, um, what a challenge. That's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> all come back next no, week boy, boy, sorry uh, at the end of every yeah, pod yeah. Mason says he gets the guest to set a challenge and he's like that's the challenge <laughs> but no, boys try it like honestly boys just look at what it does for your productivity as well and what it does for your testosterone <laughs> what it does for you getting up in the morning like you won't notice it after a couple of days I, but I did it, like, give it yeah. a week boys not having a wank I've done a and, and, and no porn and just I'm not joking like watch what it does for you getting up in the morning trust me you're going to want to have one I right did. 
And then it goes two weeks and then let it get to a month. You can have sex. That's the one rule. You're allowed to have yeah, we, sex. We always said that. You can have sex. sex. I mean, because I did it for like two, three months, right? Successfully. But I didn't have sex either. Oh, I was like, wow. I I do no, no, and do you know what? Do you know what? I got to the point where I was like, I'm not even, I got to this point where I was like, I'm not even looking at women. I'm not, like, I purposely didn't have sex and wasn't just to try. Oh, right. <laughs> but but no, I was still meeting girls and stuff, but I would say like, look, I'm, I'm not going to, I can't guarantee someone's going to, it felt weird me saying that as a guy. <laughs> but like it weirdly made them want me more. Do you know what I mean? It's You're so a better weird. man than me, man. Yeah, it had yeah. a weird, it had a strange counter charm to it. Really weird. <laughs> Because they would want me to. How, how, yeah, how do you deliver that? Just out of curiosity. So like, you're just sitting there, you go, well, by the way, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fuck you. Yeah. Well, I said before, and I said like, look, I just want to hang out. Like, I don't mind. It's like, I love that. Well, <laughs> waste the time. Don't mind, like, <laughs> you know, like, I wanted some no, dick. But, no, but this is the thing, right? Because it made me, because it made me appreciate like the, 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 the lesser grades of sexuality. Do you know what I mean? Just like the presence and touch and all that sort of stuff. But do you know the problem with it was because I wasn't having sex, sex massively regulates your testosterone. Mm. So I probably just experienced a drop in testosterone because oh, I wasn't having that sex. Makes sense. So yeah. That was what was making me not look at girls and not care about it. I thought, hang on, this is getting easier as it gets longer. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Well, right, see, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have thought that because after after a month, I was like, fuck me, like I need to release my demons, man. Do you know no, what but mean? we like, was. I was not, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you said. Yeah, yeah. Still sexually active. We we were both sexually active. That's that's what I, that's another reason why I thought it was easy. Well, I've come back from um, my trip and I've promised myself no drinking, no party, no clubbing, yeah, and I've stuck to that, <clears> yeah. <throat> and because you of do the- that, and then you make up for it on these trips, you yeah. go on, like several times. <laughs> I'd rather do that. Though. I'd rather it's like have big blowouts. It's like intermittent fasting, but with but yeah, with I know, yeah, with these trips, we're, we're, sex we're, we're li- limiting these trips <laughs> this year. But my my point was is because I haven't been going out clubbing and partying and stuff. I've not been in the environment of where I'd get into a situation with a female. Mm. It's been a fucking lot harder not to watch porn. So, yeah, so and more, yeah, not yeah, just yeah. watch porn, not have tuggies because yeah, exactly. I'm not interacting with females well, that's the, on a weekly basis. This motherfucker keeps laughing because he doesn't want me to expose <laughs> all his secrets. Now it's on the internet for everyone to see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not laughing at that, but you're, you're making that up though. As you're saying. I'm laughing just because it's <laughs> just so funny a, the way you built it up. That would all. be a bigger challenge though, right? Because if, because if, it, if, like, if sex is like relatively easy to obtain <laughs> oh, for you, yeah. then it's still, it's the same type of challenge, right? Because it, because porn is very easily attainable for everyone. That's right? so true. What you so, said. so if so, like if you have a lot of sexual options, right? It doesn't matter how they're coming to you. Like if you have a big social media, people are DMing you all the time, or if you're going out all the time, and you ended up in houses and excluded <laughs> spots with women. Like that's still a thing that you could do. Do you know what I mean? So stop him, stop him wanking when you're just, like smashing birds all the time. <laughs> it's not a challenge. You know it's I mean? not a challenge. It's not like. <laughs> oh, he's literally just ruined our fucking two weeks, two months. I'm so proud of that two months straight. You know, you shout on it. Don't feel yourself. <laughs> oh, but no, uh, boys, listen, just try that. Just try it out. No, like, porn ain't no good for you. Uh, again, yeah, but he's got a point. No, you're missing his point. You don't know that I'm you are. The point, you're like, telling these guys that you're telling guys not to go and do. Yeah, but, but because I, I mean, listen, um, this is. A, I agree with you, by the way. I agree. He's having a tuggy. A natural order of things. Having sex with with a, with a woman. Is a natural order of things. You're meant to procreate. Obviously, let's not go down that route of having babies and yeah, shit. But well, like you are, you know, you're meant to have sex, right? You're, like, we're yeah, of other than dolphins, for, for example. Yeah. Like, we're the only creatures that have sex for pleasure. So have as much fucking sex as yeah. you want. Yeah, right? I agree. I agree. Not necessarily yeah. with loads of different people. Yeah, right. Well, That's well, not always. Yeah, a good I mean, thing. <laughs> yeah, what, like, you, what you mean by loads, right? Someone's definition of loads is not going to be. Your definition. <laughs> I, I didn't want to say our because I was like, uh. no, but yeah, yeah but, right. But now who's being a politician, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> but I do that. But I think you should like. And again, we're only learning this now. Again, I wish I was told this when I, my brothers definitely weren't telling me not to have a fucking tug in, not smash birch. When I was 16, 17, 18. My, do you know what I mean? My brothers were not telling me them things. So I, I want to tell and, and give the advice to the younger to the younger generation now today that things we weren't told and things we're only realizing now. In our late twenties, um, and again, this is what the whole fucking pod's about, right? Is about the mistakes that we're still learning, yeah, of course, and have learned over the last ten years. You know, we've done a lot in the last ten years, and we've lived a lot of life and seen a lot of things, and met some amazing people, um, and so that is essentially now what we're trying to. Yeah, do. Yeah, we're learning from all our fuck ups, basically. But yeah. they're, 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 that's they're, the only way that you learn. Yeah, you learn yeah. by we making made mistakes. Made a lot of mistakes. You just mate. In 20s, you made just a lot of fucking mistakes. How you are. But I'm glad I'm making these mistakes early. I'm glad. Yeah. I, I'm glad I'm in my like, late twenties and thinking. Right, tuggies are not always necessary and porn's definitely not necessary. No. But it takes people, people are still fucking at 40, 50 still watching porn. Of course they are. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. that's because. That's probably because their sex life's dead with their partner. That, that's why exactly. I'm glad right. I'm learning yeah. all this shit I now. I like, had access to it when I was like a teenager. Though. Oh, but I was oh, porn mags every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh, it's porn mags, but like, I actually remember like being obviously young before, before internet days and 
having a tug to my imagination. Oh, I actually, yeah. I actually yeah. remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, and, and it was well, I've never in my life. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's, that's yeah. how you're using it, and I bet it's not that's as good I mean. now because you've got because you've got the form. It's it the, isn't as good. It's the low hanging nah. fruit, like. But try it, lads. In, 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 like, of the essence of that, what we're trying to say, dude, <laughs> cut the tuggies down. Yeah, cut the cut the tuggies down, but eliminate the porn. And eliminate the porn. Fucking get rid of it. Trust me, you'll you'll, you'll do you. And um, we're not we're not saints. Like I'm, I do. Well, I think I'm, I struggle with the, the porn because it's such, like you said, it's such an easy option. Yeah. I don't it's, even want to watch yeah, porn. Watch how, yeah, watch how easily. Yeah. Is watch how quickly and easily you quickly want to go back and watch. And you think to yourself, fucking hell, like I, I couldn't resist going to put. Do, put, yeah. put yeah. Watch, do you know like, something else? This is. I bet most men out there. Yeah, isn't it? Afterwards, like looking in the mirror is not the one, mate. Like, no. Yeah, sort yourself yeah or the clarity yeah. as well. You're like, you know, when you're just you just post nut clarity, is like, the fucking thing, right and you're just. Can, can I? Can I? Uh, <laughs> can, can I just say one thing? I bet, I bet a lot of boys can relate to this, or a lot of men can relate to this. Is you'll be chatting to a bird. You'll be chatting to a bird. It gets into that kind of sexual conversation. Oh. You whack on some porn. You have a tuggy and then you don't talk to them anymore or you don't want to go meet them. You don't want to go see them. That's, yeah, not, yeah. that's not a good thing. That's, that's, a, good bad, thing. that's yeah, a, right. bad that a bad thing. thing. We're all guilty of it, but that's yeah. not a good thing. Yeah. It's not a good yeah. thing. No. No. If you're arranging to see a girl on a weekend, even, even if it's not for that, like if you're actually just going out for a bit of dinner, or you're going out for the day, we're going out on a date, don't have a wank that week. Do not have a tuggy that week. I'm telling you now. Yeah, then she'll go and tell all your friends how you last at 30 seconds. Some people would say, do you have one because, yeah, so because you'll be more, you. if you don't you'll be more like desperate and yeah, yeah, no, 100%. Like, I, I agree with that as well I don't know they say two, most of the time two, I'd rather sit before. and chill with my mates and most boys would probably sit and chill rather sit and chill with their boys and they yeah. wouldn't like do you know what I mean unless you've got a fucking solid bird Bro, some some people will have a have a little oh, tug before a bird's coming round. Just well, so that's that last two minutes. That's a tactical. Ta a tactical no, one. No, 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 yeah, yeah. That's the worst one. A tactical is the worst no, no, one. No, no, I don't believe in a tactical one. You do the tactical, anyway. and you're you feel like totally different after. Oh, you know what? I'd rather just fucking chill with the lads now. Totally different afterwards. Like, oh, I want to do some work now. I should really do some work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so true. What could I be doing? What could I be doing? Clean the house. Yeah, to be productive. Yeah, then they're like, oh, did you fall asleep last night? Yeah, 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 I fell asleep. <laughs> no, really, you didn't. You fucked up that. But yeah, that's uh, that's another subject for another time. We got really into deep to tuckies, then boys. Yeah, deep, yeah, deep yeah. But it's, a, yeah. it's, it's, what, it's a main thing, guys, right? It's, it's a main thing for guys. And, and these are conversations we. Yeah, I want to keep these real. These pods the, as yeah, well. That's the that's the takeaway point, isn't it? Is like learn to control your urges, like hundred percent, hundred percent, like uh, like aggressive urges, like uh, urges to sort of like overcome things, urges to get to the end, urges to finish things. Control if your they're urges. They're not serving you in a good way. Like fucking control your urges, like yeah. because because you can harness you can harness that energy for good, can't you? Yeah, you yeah, so that. true. Yeah, wow, yeah. Because it's like the it's like the male urge to like it's like carrying all the fucking shopping bags in at once. Yeah, it's like I'll I will fucking do it. You know what I mean? It's I don't like, want to make two trips. Exactly, yeah. I'm taking it exactly, all Exactly. Yeah, it's that kind of urge that that can be harnessed for good or bad. Can't yeah, it? it can be detrimental, for sure. Right, lads, I think... Uh, did, did, came to a did, you ask me, did you ask me all the questions? Or? We, uh, <laughs> mate, we have the really. question. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a prompt, isn't they're, it? They're, they're prompt. Things, yeah. what, what, it did come to a natural close. It's just one thing I really want to pick your brain about. I could I could have done it off camera, but I'm, I'm intrigued to know your views on it because it's something I personally don't believe in. I'm and we, we spoke on it quite often on the pod. I personally don't believe in marriage now, in, that, in, in this oh, day and okay. age. But I did want your opinion on marriage. And the reason why I don't believe in it, I don't believe I need to get the government involved in my affairs when I love this woman or I want to be with this woman. Why do I need to now get the government involved in in that part of my life when they're already involved in every other part of my life? It's, do you believe in marriage? It's, I do believe in marriage, yeah. I, did, I think I used to because I watched a lot of Michael Sartain. <laughs> He's right. talking about like divorce rates and shit like that. And it's like- That's another reason as well. 70% yeah, of that's not divorces are made That's not a, that's, that's not by a women. thing on- yeah, yeah. That's not a diss to marriage though because guess what else fails? Most everything. Most businesses yeah, yeah, fail. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most things fail. Like mm -hmm. if, if you choose not to get married, if you choose to be single, for like most relationships fail. Yeah. No, but what I was saying is, if you start... choose not to get, if you choose not to get married, does that mean you're automatically just a fucking? You just got all these options, like <laughs> because you because I, you decided I to think, be single. No, no, it's but not. I, I don't want men, to be. Men, men want to get married, but the risk outweighs the benefit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that's what it yeah, is. There's too much being, to lose. Broken up on. Or, yeah, or like, like the, so the, you're the, the monetary, financials. The thing, I, yeah, I feel like we're in a. Sorry, bro. I'm just gonna say, I feel like women are in relation. Like men and women get in relationships, and the women always want to get married. The men are like, oh, just, I'm an hour about it until you think, you know what, I've met a good bird. Clearly, this is what she wants. It's like every single girl's childhood little dream. And then essentially, that's when a man would do it, only if he believes she is the right woman. Otherwise, yeah. like I said, the risk will outweigh the benefit. And then the man is fucked when he gets a divorce. Yeah, okay. So the, the solution to that is get a prenup. Yeah. 
that just cuts all that out, doesn't it? Get my my ex he, agreed to a prenup because obviously when I was with my ex, I planned on marrying her at some point. I mean, I said to her, if any, we get married, I need any, a prenup. Any, any she agreed. Any reasonable person would agree to that, right? Yeah. But I think the institution of marriage is is a good and yeah, noble I think it's a good one, thing. and I think it totally depends who you enter into that with. <clears throat> so you wouldn't go into business with a fucking some like swindler, would you? Do you know what I mean? Like, you... it's a partnership, isn't it? I believe. Exactly, I believe. Exactly, I believe getting married yeah, is, is a it is partnership. Take, like, I think it's. I think it's we're a, about to go on this fucking mad old. What, journey what we call life when yeah. we're gonna go it through some shit bro. time but why do together. you need why do you need a bit of paper to say you love that like, it's that not that it's, 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 it's I the, think it's the uh, I think it's an important symbolic yeah it shows a to, symbolic thing of uh, we are now one item yeah, we're, we're, but, that's it like we're, yeah. not, we're, we're an item now like I've committed but, to you committed to me like I think if you fucking we had this conversation if you fucking cheat like just don't do it. Like, just yeah, yeah. if people have done it and everyone's been guilty but like when you're married to somebody fucking like you've made that fucking decision man like, yeah. stick back with that in the person. day there's a problem like you work for your relationship like people used to fight for their relationship like some people have been through fucking hell back and forth and ended up together have the best start but now yeah. because oh, people because we have because they got people, options yeah well they believe they have more options than what yeah, they had exactly. because it's there, so it's also to get attention it's just right there so it's, it's the culture as well of like if something's something minutely is wrong i can just chuck it out and start again yeah, yeah. and get a new one well, everyone okay. thinks the grass is greener, isn't it? Well, that's yeah. that's this is another reason why I have the pod. I'm still learning. I, I well, I've been against marriage for many years. I, I still I'm still my, my, I haven't swayed my opinion, but seeing another perspective on it has yeah. definitely yeah, yeah. altered my decision, my my, my yeah, maybe yeah. future decision. It's not as important as the relationship. Like, yeah, of course. You you do need a you do need a a long term relationship. I think. Yeah. Like um, and you, you can look at all these arguments about like, you know a human being's naturally monogamous or are they not, and it's like. They seem to be to me when you look at like most people being monogamous. It kind of it, that's surely yeah. the definition. Most of animals natural, are most as well. No, not most animals. Exactly, not true. Most birds are. Most no, birds. Most animals are as well. I don't think most. An- no, they're not. They are. No. Animals yeah, are, bro. It depends on the species. The species, yeah. bir- birds are monogamous as fuck. They will not yeah, fuck they, any other bird apart mate, from their partner. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of animals mate for life. Like. But lions and shit, bro, they fuck off. Lions, yeah, but, yeah, 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 but you look at most of the other creatures, like monkeys, gorillas, really, like, think they're... No, mon- monkeys, monkeys aren't monkeys monogamous. Don't, don't, don't monkeys, bro, yeah, trust me, it's only majority of birds are monogamous. Monkeys aren't. Monkeys are fucking players, bro. Monkeys are. Monkeys are. Monkeys are. Yeah, they are, yeah. Oh, they are. You yeah, I thought they you were. Know, you know, that's, the, that's where the Monkeys term, are monogamous. That's, that's where the term alpha male came from. As a, a chimpanzee primatologist made it up. Basically, the, the male that is like the top of the group was called the alpha male, but he wasn't interested. He wasn't, it wasn't because he was the most no, violent. It was, it, was, it was because he had a good mix of skills, including empathy and like a caringness for the group. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they were. Yeah, it's only, there are, there's actually fewer animals I, that aren't. Than are oh, I don't know. Yeah, but anyway, I look into it. it doesn't matter. But anyway, I understand the argument. Like, yeah. you know, not being monogamous. I understand that argument, and especially if you're like in inside of a culture where there's a lot of casual sex going on, and you see what happens and stuff. You see the true human nature of people cheating on each other, and like, fucking hell, that girl last night had a boyfriend. You know, so we've all been there. We're guilty like, of it, and we. And I think it was yeah, annoying. We live in that society course, now, and yeah, so, I, I don't like it. I know so we live get, in it, but. So, I, like, I plan. I really hope that the next person I'm with, I've been we've been seeing for a long time. Four like, years for me. Yeah, it's like six years same for me. Like I truly hope that the next people, uh, myself, and I see my my all my powers get with. I hope that they see it through, through like throughout. Yeah. I, I really truly hope that the next person who is I, I let into my life and she lets me into hers. I think that's it now. Like oh, I, be nice. Twenty eight, twenty nine. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, 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 I want to stick with you now for the rest of my life. Like, yeah, without yeah. that, and I want to see that for all my pals. Yeah, of course. Because I have seen my some of my mates, and believe it or not, I've actually seen the boys get fucking walked over and heartbroken. It's like I don't ever want to see that again. So yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Right, boys, we're gonna have to finish up the pod there. I think we've nearly done two yeah, hours. I think we just short shot two hours. It was a fucking fantastic yeah. pod, Mike. He was excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much for traveling all the way down to Manchester to Kent from to from, from sorry from Manchester to Kent to do this pod. It was a pleasure having you on, mate. Yeah, it was like lovely that, mate. picking your brains, lovely hearing your opinions and stuff. And again, this the whole point of this pod is to share the wisdom of our guests and have open conversations about various different subjects that we feel feel like are better the men that well not just men people that view our pods mm. so thank you once again Mason do you want to set the challenge yeah Mike well, so <laughs> <laughs> the tuggies everyone yeah no tuggies boys for a month <laughs> um, everyone we ask every guest that comes on the pod to essentially set us a challenge that they feel has benefited you in some way 
Um, you've learned from it and thought, yeah, that was good. And that, that might be something that you still do today or it was just a one-time thing that you've done and benefited from it um, that you'd like to see us basically try and do. We'll you know, try and commit ourselves to it. And we'll also then um, tell, the, uh, tell the viewers about it as well. And hopefully other people can then try it too. All right. <laughs> well, this is going to be very specific to you and not something that I've uh, done recently, but maybe... Maybe abstaining from casual sex. For how long? Um, Coming into summer now, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like festivals here. Yeah. Right, um, right, what, what are we in now? We're on... To call it 1st of March. Yeah, 1st yeah. of March tomorrow. Okay. Well, no, you don't have to abstain. <laughs> Look at this guy's yeah. face. He's like, I, I don't want to yeah, do it. Yeah, abstain. I yeah, don't abstain. know what it is. If it's, not, if it's not someone that you would, you know, go out in public with, like take out and stuff like that, don't do it. Not For how long? Like, you know, just pulling like randoms. Back. Yeah, but for how long? Uh, I would say. I it's like it's asking a time frame, like it's a bad thing. Let's say. I oh, know. That's because we're. Uh, six weeks. Six weeks. Okay, I can do six weeks. Eight weeks. <laughs> this guy. To be, fair, to be fair, to be fair, I just I've did. Already, I just done yeah, six I've weeks. Done it already, yeah. All right, two months. Uh, two months. Oh, fuck, should have said that. should have said longer. Two months, no shopping, yeah, basically. All right, it's okay, easy. cool. So abstaining. Was that everything? Everything? Or just sec sexual encounters? It's just, ca just very casual. Cool, that's right. Okay, okay, fine, I can fine, do that. Fine, fine, fine. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, boys, right, <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, guys, well, that's the end of the pod. It's, very, right, it's been a pleasure, brother. Yeah, we tried yeah, keeping it poli uh, politically correct, but then we just fucking lost our way and just yeah, started just waffling. Know. But I loved it. I loved every second of it. So, guys, if you're new around here and you made it this far on the pod, thank you very much. <laughs> Give it a big like, hit the subscribe button, and we should see you in the next. Cheers. Yeah.